So, what did just happen? Let's see. Um, <gasps> you know, you, you've had enough. You've had enough rest. It's time for some combat music. Rollcasters, thanks for following. Oh, man, Maybe it's time for <laughs> some distress and heartbreak. <laughs> so, it's it's time for some wonderful death. <laughs> All right, and scene. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Bill. No, wait, wait. Oh, we're going to do the scene thing? Okay, scene. No, you laughed. You were laughing. Oh, I did. I did. I laughed. That's true. I did. Actually, I think I don't think he was shiggling. I don't think he was laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was a total was shiggle. Bill was eviscerated. Um, so Shaggett's going to have to pull the cart for the rest of the adventure. Simple. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Use my strength domain. That's what ball strength for, right? Cart yeah, pulling. Yeah, ball strength. Right, right. Okay, so um, just for giggles and shiggles, You're gonna let's add some get dorms. some initiative rolls going. Oh. oh, boy. Just for shiggles and shits? <laughs> Assuming any of you actually plan on getting in the fight this time around, Shaggett with a 13. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that, oh, too. Oh, right. oh, so, what yeah. is wrong? See, she's... she's it's the emotional she's, distress. Yeah, she's so overcome with emotion. I don't want to be in this battle. I just want to mourn poor, 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 poor old Billy. Did you see Billy. my dice? I didn't see my dice. Uh, I did. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, bear boy. What are we putting the bear at? Uh, 16. Put him here. And now we're going to roll for the dwarves. The, what what oh, are you? Are you going to add the dwarves to the die? Because I want to see what they look like. Oh, they'll be, they'll, they'll be, yeah, they're all kind of behind you on the... Yes! Um, <laughs> all right, I just want, yeah, We're fixing tokens. to add the dwarves, don't all you right, worry. Cool. Awesome. Um, Dwarf tokens for days! <laughs> five of them. Let's see. Dwarves are going right before the bear. Okay. All righty. Gaffer Ironbeard and his company leap forward and start charging towards the bear. <laughs> There they are. <laughs> Those tokens look so dumb. Go dwarves! Those tokens are so small. It's how big. I mean, if you look at the size of the bear, to keep it all in comparison. Oh, man. And if you guys choose to get off the cart, let me know, and I've got the off the cart tokens ready to go for you as well. <laughs> Oh, well, right. I would think considering there's an 8,000 pound bear that just ate the front of the cart, I'm probably going to get off the cart. <laughs> okay, so Same. Uh, Kia Liana, you are first in the rotation for yeah. initiative. What well, are you doing? Um, are yes, they Kia! Ten foot squares? Sorry? Are they 10 foot squares today? Um, they're actually, um, let's see, where are we? They're 20s. 20s, okay. 20 foot squares. Well, however far I'm going to get, I'm going to jump off the cart and go head this way. Okay, so you're gonna get to about here. Okay, good. There's there's the there's Kia as she runs. Okay, it is now the dwarves' turn as they're charging forward towards the bear. Anyway, that's their action. I just I just can't help but feel that they're just gonna go clip the bear's nails or something. Like they're a part of a barber shop, you know. But they shoe all have shining. impressively oversized weapons, except for this tattooed guy up here who's just holding one of the warhammer. That's my wee lad, Gimli. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the bear this round is basically chowing down on pieces of bill. <laughs> Shag it! Um, so what is Radavan doing? Uh, I'm leaping off and likewise going to the same direction. Don't follow me. Cat. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> okay, and Racer, you're doing the same? Yes, I'm hiding behind Whoa, Jane. I, don't Actually, I want to be within her touch range in case she needs to touch me. Inappropriately. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. got him. <laughs> okay, so here's here's our three well intrepid done. heroes gathered up in a little corner right here. Okay, at this point, the dwarves are closing in. The bear has now paid attention to the fact that there's other things around it. Kia, it is your turn to act. All right, I'm not shooting. I'm going to run over here. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm still running. I'm still running. She bravely uh, run away. Get, I'm, <laughs> okay, so you run to there. All right, the bear. Um, this round, it's still eating on the bill because nothing else has attacked it. In come the dwarves. Okay, dwarf A right here shoots his crossbow and misses. Dwarf B shoots his crossbow and misses. That's two ones in a row. Seriously. I just rolled two ones. Um, nice. I would roll the fail. Yeah, that this it would be nice if it was the bear getting these ones. Okay. Oh. 
can't we just leave the bear alone and let him eat his meal and then wander off? Well, yeah, right. we can bravely run away. These two dwarves with their oh. axes, one with a dwarven war axe and one with a great axe, including that's Gaffer Ironbeard and... Oh, that motherfucker's dead. Budrick. Charge in. Gaffer Ironbeard swings wildly and hits and then swings again and hits. And I'm going to just tell you what he's doing so you can kind of get a feel of how tough these dwarves are. Just so okay. you kind of, you know. Okay. okay. The first blow from Gaffer, the leader of the dwarves, lands for 11. The second blow lands for 10. So he's done 21 points of damage. Yeah. Wow. The other dwarf swings and hits only once, however. And he hits for... Actually, he hits for... 16. Tough dwarves. Good dwarves. They're all, well, me I, I, they're all melee fighters, massive. so I mean. <laughs> so I, I we feel, are at 37. Yeah. Okay. So thus far, 37 points of damage. Now, anyone paying attention, actually, you probably can't really see what's going on because of the size of the bear and the cart and dwarves being kind of small. Um, but there was definitely a flash of holy light of some kind go off on the other side as well. Hmm. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you, they just made you redundant, Radavan. <laughs> I know, I'm, I, I just like sit down and watch. Radavan, go know? home. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> but then it's the bear's turn. The bear attacks the dwarf directly in front of it, tearing at him with the first claw and hitting, missing with the second claw. Um, let's, roll, let's roll some bear damage. Are we re-roll bot botless on purpose? No, he's there. Oh, he's being a little sleepy. Is he? Oh, I don't see him there. Yeah, I haven't seen him do anything. Oh, um, oh, you know why? <laughs> re-roll bot's dead. No, Ooh. he's he's dead. He's not because I had to change. That's a Twitch thing. Ah, stupid uh, Twitch. Oh. I mean, that's stupid Twitch. Because I had to change the authentication, <laughs> didn't I? He yes, actually just is. gave up because of Bill's death. So you know what? It's not a big deal. I will fix him at the first break. Sure. I'm not going to mess with him right now. He's only a bot after all. He's only a bot. He doesn't care about the story. Or no, us. He doesn't care. Uh, okay, so... This dwarf right here just got clawed for 14 points of damage. Ouchie. Whew. And bitten... Four significantly more, probably. Ooh. For 16. Ouch. A total of 30 points of damage goes to that dwarf, but he's still standing, the tough little mite. Wow. It now is time for Radavan. What does Radavan want to work? Well, I'm going to I'm gonna back up a little bit, because, you know, I'm not stupid enough to get toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bear. I'm going to do a Searing Light spell. I'm just going to, like, blast his face or something. I That's my plan. Searing Light. Fire away, sir. Well, I have to hit first. Please hit. Oh, lordy. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> nope. Nope. You blast away, but you miss. God, you're useless. How big is that thing? Um, <laughs> oh, should I get some benefit? You do, you know? but it's still not enough to hit, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the extra added bonuses of the pluses due to size, you still missed it. Look, I blame Daft to Dep. He always, po he always okay. like, messes with me. That's what it is. Racer, <laughs> is your turn. I am going Kia's to run. Kia's running away from you as fast as she can, so the getting touched <laughs> isn't working out. Um, and you said each square was 20? Yes. Okay, so I can move about a square and a half? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, or you can sprint. And a half. I'm going to go right there. <laughs> okay, getting out of the line of fire. <laughs> <laughs> she bravely ran away. That's exactly what I see going on. Okay, Kia, it is your turn. Right on his butt in here. I'm fireballing. Okay, um, my size is a little out of... He's not quite that big, actually. Oh, there, but, he's not. Well, no, but I mean, it's... I need to bring him down. Just, I wasn't going to do it if I saw any No, you won't hit him. anybody. I just I just okay. realized I had him a little too large. Okay, you're going <laughs> to hurl a fireball at the back end of the bear. Yes, yes. Roll the damage. Seven Come on, dice. Six. Wait, is it seven? No, six. Okay. Ooh, look at the pretty dice. Roll the dice. Twenty. Okay, you nuke the bear for 20 points of damage. That, that was gets epic. to try to save that was for half and... <laughs> so okay. Fireball. The bear lets out a loud roar of pain and anguish 
as the fireball hits it hard in the rear. Oh my god. Okay, oh, nice. so, um, let's look. Who's next? The dwarves! Okay, dwarf crossbow dwarves fire again. Finally, one of them with the crossbow hits it. For six. Now the dwarves with the axes go in. Gaffer Ironbeard swings first. And scores a crit! Yes! <laughs> um, that Well, crits with axes are bad. Um, I switch your dice three. out. <laughs> so the bear's going to roll high as well, Hold unfortunately. <laughs> well, again, this is just kind of it helps to give you an idea of how tough your dwarves are. Um, hits him for... That hit landed for 38 points of damage. Wow, are you serious? Yeah, oh yeah. You gotta keep these dwarves around. Uh, great Axe does times three on a crit. Oh my god. <laughs> Not times two, and with a d12 plus eight. Um, bearing in mind, wow. Gaffer Ironbeard is a old, kind of hardened, muscle-bound, gnarly-looking fellow, so he's probably seen a few sprats, <laughs> killed a few elves and stuff in his past. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna retire, guys. I'm, I'm... <laughs> the other one... Hey, look at it this way. They're soaking up all your damage. <laughs> <laughs> Let them do We're the so work. Selfish, the question is, how are they going to act when them. they realize you did squ swat all to help? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other one swings wildly. He hits. Doesn't crit, however. Almost did. Ooh. And he hits for... Eh, not so much. Okay. The bear is looking seriously hacked up and slashed up and battered. Good to know. Um, however, it unloads itself on the same dwarf again. No. Hitting him twice. No. With the claw damage. Two big giant bear maulers. The first blow hits for 14. The second one hits for 15. Oh my gosh. So that's 15 and 14 is now taken. 50, so then 59 points of damage. Um, let me check my dwarves. Okay, that dwarf looks seriously injured. Should I get around the van? Seriously beat up, hacked up, and um, bleeding <laughs> profusely. <laughs> he doesn't care. Okay, uh, it is Radavan's turn. Ironically, Radavan, he is the closest dwarf to you. No. You need to care. I, a part of me really just wants to go in and show these dwarves that I can do a hit. But yeah, he's really hurt too. So I'm going to run. Um, see, I'm putting myself in harm's way. I'm going to run to him and do a cure serious. So I'm sacrificing my fourth level divine power on right. him. You won't be able to cast this turn. You won't, you'll, just, you'll be able to get to him. Oh, for real? Yeah, you're too far away. Yeah, that was about 30 or 20. Um, well, that was like, that was less. I was. The oh. squares 20, are 20 feet. 20 foot squares. So you basically so run like uh, 30 foot to get to him. So just use him as a shield while you're waiting. <laughs> yeah. Can I cat? I can't do anything. So that was a full turn. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> That's your action. You move at you make it a full. I should have cast to go above the your standard move action to do yeah, it. Yeah. All right. That's okay. I'll take it. Um, dies, racer. Dies. Can I hit it? Uh, he's about 70 feet away for an arrow shot. Is you can that hit it? Uh, you won't yeah? get point blank, but you can hit it with your normal attack. Yeah. And I get two arrows off, right? Yes, you do. Alright. Yes! It was so that close. was almost yeah, a one. That one. It man. was so close, but yes, it's the first hit. And the second hit. Hit it twice. 2d6 damage. Oh, come on. Oh, look. <laughs> hey, you can't say I didn't do anything now. No, right? At least you got some arrows in the you got some arrows in the mix, right? <laughs> okay, Kia, your turn. <laughs> um, I'm going to wave my hands and do a magic missile. Okay. Just one. Um, <laughs> just one magic missile. I could do um, more, I'm just gonna yeah. do one. <laughs> Here we go. Try to one? let the Let's try to help the bear survive. <laughs> Ooh, I see four. Ah, 16. 16 points of damage. Well, magic blue balls of light fly through the air and strike our nasty little bear right here. Oh! Ha -ha! I'm so useless. <laughs> and he is dispatched. 
<laughs> Kia starts uh, clapping for Radovan. Oh, hail the dwarves. <laughs> slow clap. Oh, that slow damage. Clap. Yeah, slow clap. Uh, I'm going to do a cure series right away because, you know, I'm, I'm a team player. And, right, you, know. you want to save the dwarves. Right, you got to make us look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Uh, so it's, it's a fourth level spell. So it's 4d6? Yes. What is it? 4d6 plus 7. Don't say I didn't ever do anything, motherfucker. Watch it be like a two. Ooh. All right. All right, so what do we roll here? We got a 22. Okay. You healed him for 22. He is slightly less dead, but he's still still seriously <laughs> injured. <laughs> slightly <laughs> less dead. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Yeah, he he, he was, he ha he's got 65 hit points oh, and he's lost oh, 59 of them. <laughs> Are you effing kidding me, man? <laughs> <laughs> how many rolls could you, how many ones could you roll? Three. Oh, three <laughs> out of... That's a 75% one rate. That's pretty okay. impressive, even for you. <laughs> okay, here's here's my here's my third level. Why are you wasting? There you it? go. Because he's hurt. I gotta be useful, man. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna make him think there's a reason to keep him around. <laughs> oh, Alrighty. So I'm oh, is it 48? Yes. Is it 48, not 46? It's D8s, yeah. Oh, I rolled sixes, so that's ah, a... Ah, Cuthbert doesn't even know anything. Whatever, it's yeah. fine. You know what, St. Cuthbert was a... That, the reason you only yeah. got those is because Cuthbert was ashamed of you. It's like, yeah. you don't even know how to cure <laughs> He was serious. ashamed okay. of you. He I'll was like, it. you know what? Um, that was horrible. He's no, like, no, I'll you take suck. It. I'll take you did it. nothing. I'm not giving you maximum healing power. You don't deserve it, says Cuthbert, yeah. and he diminishes your heals. <laughs> so how long would it take me to theoretically skin this thing? Oh my um, God. a long, long <laughs> time, and you would need you yeah. need the cart to transport it. God damn it! <laughs> we well, got a little of army that, of ponies. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of the situation here, really. Um, so Karen Brandfinder walks over to you and he says, "Well, I guess we better hook up a couple of the ponies to the cart. Get that carcass out the way." Can I attempt and see if it's worth it? Um, you can if you wish. Because it might take them a while to rig up some harnesses for tiny ponies, right? Oh, they're, yeah, they're dwarves. They'll, 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 they'll dwarf rig it. <laughs> but they'll probably argue on their way, right? So I've got time to at least attempt to skin this thing, right? Yep. Okay, it's handle animal, correct? It is. And I get my bonus plus two. Yes. Come on! No, oh, no, 13. No. Eh, hack nope. job. <laughs> um, the problem is, with all the extra bone plating and horns and stuff sticking out of this thing, it's really difficult to kind of figure out how you should skin it, and you pretty much make a terrible hack job. All right, well, I'll cut a few steaks out. What are you doing, out. Racer? Dar, dar so, bear steaks. Go. Oh, okay. <laughs> For later. Mistakes were made. Oh. Mistakes were made, exactly. Yeah. All right, he's like... Yeah, can I take the claws at least? Oh yeah, you can take some of the claws off of it. Are you okay. gonna put it in a jar, or are you just gonna let it rot in your backpack? Well, like, these claws ones are not rot. gonna rot, are they? <laughs> They're made of bony Whoa, stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> they have five claws. <laughs> That's true, but is uh, she removing the tendons and the muscles and stuff? Let's be real here. It's Raisa. Five claws per paw. Um, like there's five. Yeah, five. five on I each. give up. Can I take all of them? <laughs> uh, if you want, yeah. Each one of them is you probably about. Um, Almost five to six inches long. Like a dagger? <laughs> Damn, I'm pretty close to it, yeah. All right, I'm taking them. Growing stars. There I'll offer go. them to anybody that wants them, so if any of the dwarves want one, let me know. Well, a couple of the dwarves are grumbling at the fact that they're losing their ponies because it's going to take two of them. They get to ride in the cart. They're well, fun. that's exactly what they're going to have to do because <laughs> they're sure not going to keep up. Alrighty, so, yep, they... They tie two of the ponies to the cart using some of their own rope to make some makeshift um, bits and bridles. I'm gonna take a minute to mourn the loss of Bill. I'm gonna I was kneel just gonna down say, next can to I him mourn and like, Bill? Yeah. put my hands on him and have a moment of silence. It's a bloody mess. I mean, <laughs> so let's go for the morning. I'm done. There we go. <laughs> Five seconds is all he got. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you get. He was a second-rate pony, but a ma uh, first-rate main course. There you go. All right. I was gonna so, say first-rate pony. Uh, first-rate could friend. You, could you burning hand some of that meat so we can get some uh, food? 
I, I, I already brought out some steaks. I got some dire steaks. Are you talking about Bill? <laughs> yeah, horse meat. Come on. Go home, Stop. Radovan. Just it's going to go bad out here. You want flies to eat it as opposed to his friends? Well, as soon as you start saying that, a couple of the dwarves look at each other and go, hmm. <laughs> seeing that they, and they walk over and he goes, I'll take a bit of that. <laughs> oh my god! They gosh. start carving pieces of. He is gonna walk they start away carving pieces of Bill off. They weren't gonna out of respect, but as soon as Radavan seems okay with it, they've assumed maybe they're all okay with it. And they cut a few more strings. Really good meat. We don't know what's gonna happen to us. Let's be real. Come on. He goes. I'd rather eat this horse than that darn thing over there. Dire meat look tastes at... disgusting. I'm gonna look at my steaks, kind of put them down. <laughs> like, oh, bitty and sinewy. Ugh. They kind of Try gather up. They, they, you know, they. After a while, they they probably cut most of the flanks off into very over like thirty-two <laughs> ounce steaks, and they just slap wrap them up in a piece of cloth, blood dripping out of them, and stuff them in their backpacks. Ooh. He was our friend. Bill and you betrayed him. He was our friend. Alrighty. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. And jolly tasty he will be too. Uh. Well, once you've once you've saddled up, um, they take the you know, you, you take your cart, you load up those um, dwarves, and head on your merry way, continuing towards Skeldergate. Hit him up. Boom, all right. do, 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 do. Okay, you get about here by the end of the first day. The dwarves are very eager to camp down and light fires. Once again, you witness as the dwarves' efficiency as they leap off their horses, pull out their backpacks, set up a fire, um, set up a spit, bring out all their pots and pans, and immediately go to rubbing their bellies and swigging their ale as they gleefully look at the ginormous horse steaks that they're about to chow down on. How far are the trees? Um, it's about, I mean, there's you're probably about 60 foot either side of the road. Oh, it's not bad. No, you can, you can I'm gonna get go there and... find a tree. I'm assuming, it was Radovan, Radovan, are you kind of in by the trees? Uh, I'm actually gonna be following you, and then at the base of the tree, I'm just gonna hunker down and sit down. Okay, cool. Because, yeah, I was gonna say, I'll, I'll go with you, and we'll just kind of walk off. Yeah. Okay, are you, you staying with the dwarves, or though. are you going yeah. no, to... I don't want to watch them eat Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, segregate your, you segregate yourselves from the dwarven party. You know, being the dwarves that they are, they really don't care. They're quite <laughs> happy. They don't see it as an insult, they just see it as you can't handle your ale. As they continue to guzzle and swig and stuff themselves silly. With delicious Bill. Yeah, Alrighty. Um, see that. Let's see if we have any unpleasant encounters for you this evening. <laughs> um, are you guys doing your own kind of watch? Uh, as you've already found out, the dwarves don't. They go to sleep. Um, I won't because of where I am. Right. Unless my cohorts ask me to. I'll keep watch. I mean, I don't mind. Okay. For staff, so. All right. Yeah. Either the dwarves don't care or the dwarves assume that nothing's stupid enough to attack them. Either that or they're just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have no idea yet. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, well, nothing bad happens. So you travel on the next day, late that evening. You arrive at the walled town of Skeldergate. Now, you can see that there is a large pond to the right of it. It's almost a lake, but not quite. And a huge wooden walled palisade fence comes up all the way around it. Hmm. Um, there is a... Um, large closed gate ahead of you. Ooh. And you guys are approaching from here. Right. Alright, what do you wish to do? Enter the town. It's closed, right? So we're gonna... The gates are closed, yeah. Well, Charge! I'm, gonna... <laughs> to, to knock well, I'm, on it. Well, I'm gonna let the dwarves do what they're gonna do, because they're leading the party, right? So... Kind of are they gonna do anything? Like, shout out, or... Knock on the door, or are they looking at us? Um, who, the dwarves? Yeah. Uh, well, right now, they're just kind of looking at you. <laughs> okay. Oi! <laughs> I knew it. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Oi! Oi, you! Okay, there is absolutely no answer. I look at the dwarves, and I say, uh... No, okay, no at one which man point, Karen Brandfinder, that's the tattooed one that you suspect was possibly responsible for the Blast of Light, 
screams at the top of his voice. Open the gate, you bastards! <laughs> and then a couple of, like, about five seconds goes past with no response. So then the other dwarves start yelling, Let us in, open the gates! Oh, come on, we got drinking to do! <laughs> After about five minutes, you notice that the dwarves are seriously contemplating hacking the gate down. A couple of them have got over and they've gone over and they're starting to debate whether they should or shouldn't. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Is it uh, is it usual for no one to answer? Like, I, I ask this to the dwarves. Yes. Don't know. Never been here before. Oh. oh. Well, let's not, like, burst our way in. Uh, Kia, um, Risa, mind maybe scouting, doing a listen check? Maybe we see something's not right here? Can I see the towers in the, the, the north, to the north and south? Um, probably, yes. Is there, is there anybody in them? Um, make a spot check. I really should know my spot by now. <laughs> oh. 15. Oh. Um, you kind of you kind of glance, and you, but it, it's a good distance over there. There's no light coming from them, so you're like squinting into the dark, but mm. you can't really see anything. You're like, I'll point out the guard towers at least. Guys, uh, guard towers. Okay. What does the wall look like? Like, is it climbable by Risa? I mean, um, with a... it's. I mean, it's probably about a twelve foot. It's twelve foot tall, like huge, big tree stakes in the ground. Um, but yeah, I mean, with a few climbing spikes and a piece of rope, she could climb over it. Or what if she like climbs on my shoulders and I hoist her up? Um, probably. I she mean, could, she could push up off your shoulders to grab the top. All right, I'm gonna dismount and you know gesture for Risa to peek over the the um yeah. the doors. <laughs> I yeah, jumped a lot easier just to hack it down. <clears throat> yeah, but that that's possibly breaking the law. Let's not do that, sir. Huh. Whatever. I just want to I just want to get inside. I don't want to sleep out here anymore. You you don't have any ale left over in your your travel bag? Like your little purse? Of course you we just... do. But that's well, when there is a tavern. Go oh, have a swig or two. I know what it's like. Risa, come here. Let's go. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm at that point, up. you do hear a, a, a like a voice coming from a little far away and he goes, "Who are you?" Make yourselves visible! By the door! <laughs> no, who are you? We can see there's somebody over there, but we can't see you! We are travelers! Light a torch or something! Let us see you! I'm gonna light up my shield and just like shine it oh. in the oh. <laughs> Okay, so you illuminate the area, and the dwarves all kind of stand back a little bit. And he goes, huh? So you're not trolls, then? Do we look like trolls? Yeah, they're being very small trolls, <laughs> if you are. <laughs> Hold on a second, I'm coming to the gate. T took you long enough, man. After a little while, you hear somebody kind of on the other side scurrying. It says, what do you want here? It's after curfew. We don't open the gates this late. It's too dangerous. Dangerous for what? Dangerous for being killed. Last From few what? weeks, terrible things have happened. We've lost several people. No one wanders outside after dusk. We lock the gates up and we keep them shut. We're not here to kill anyone. We're here for a room, please. Just passing through. Well, it's a bit late, that's all. The curfew and all. So you're going to leave us out here to die? You hear Innocent another voice people? say, They've got a point. <laughs> yeah, but we don't know who they are. What if they're, what if they're bandits? What if they're murderers? He goes, I doubt bandits and murderers have been knocking on the gate. What if they're nice people? Add that. <laughs> Look, my name is Radovan Rainier. I'm a priest of Saint Cuthbert. I am not a bandit. Saint Cuthbert, what's that all about then? Oops. <laughs> uh, it's a religious order of you know lawfulness. Lawfulness. Well, these so dwarves wanted to then. break down your door, and I stopped them. So that's kind of a sign. Yeah, no, that don't I'm... do that. We need those gates. Yes. So. So who's in your company? How many of you are there? Oh, well, there's Gimli, um... <laughs> Frodo, <laughs> Glowing, <Samwise>. Ripper, <laughs> Gandalf. So, nope, there's only not, there's only eight of you. Sorry, you don't qualify for a full blown company. You have to have nine. <laughs> All right. Well, Cal. There's Cal too. Oh, you're going right. to include Cal now. All of a sudden, he's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> now that you meet him. Yeah, right. 
five dwarves, a rogue, uh, not a rogue, I'm not going to say rogue, five dwarves, two ladies, and me. <laughs> five say. dwarves and a murderer! <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, he says, hmm, what do you think? They seem all right. All right, I'm fixing to open the gate, but hurry in as quickly as you possibly can. No lollygagging. 10 4, rubber duck. I'm going to lollygag in there. Okay, they open the gate and kind of hoard you through as fast as they possibly can. Daintily walk in. Inside the town, um, it is a very simple setup. Um, not many buildings at all. Um, you can see a little bit of illumination, but even the lights, mo- it, it looks like they've got shutters over all the windows. They're like trying, it's like a blackout. They're trying to stay all quiet and not give any hint that there's anybody here. Should I should I turn my shield off, I'd say to the guy, because I'm the only one illuminating something? He says, that's probably best. We don't want to draw attention. Uh, I, I, can I turn, how do I turn it on? I don't want to turn it off. They, <laughs> uh, there's an off switch on Wait, the back. It. Maybe I'll pull, pull the fuse. No. Alright. <laughs> no, this is, yeah, you, you can you can turn it off at will. I can turn that it off. off at will. switch though. Okay, it says best make your way he goes, best make your way to the tavern. Third <laughs> building on the left. Thank you, sir. I'm actually gonna stay behind with this guy. Okay. Are you guys gonna As the company goes ahead. Alright, so you wanna deliberately stay and talk to him. I'm gonna notice that Radavan's doing that and kinda hang back with him ish. Okay. I'm going Just walk straight. slower. Well, the, the dwarves, dwarves don't care. They're they're heading straight. For the, the concept of a tavern is definitely a good idea to them. So they're heading straight for the pub. Um, okay, so what do you want to say to this guy? What's going on here? He says, Well, the curfew. We don't open the gates. Last few weeks it was decreed the local mayor... He decided that we were not to open the doors after dusk, after all oh, the gates. We're probably getting in awful trouble for this. Okay, and you, the the reason for that? All the deaths, people disappearing. Okay, who's been disappearing and how? Well, there's been several people. See, we're mostly foresters here, and it's always been safe recently, but recently. Well, certain foresters would go out and not come back. During nighttime or during the day? Well, they usually don't come back until after it gets dark, but they didn't come back. We lost a few of them. And somebody... And he kind of glances at the other guy that's standing with him, and he rolls his eyes. He goes, Reckons he saw trolls. Trolls? He said, I did see trolls. Green ones. How tall? <laughs> um, probably about eight foot, I suppose. But there was a lot of them. Oh, uh, I, I do. I see Reza. Like, are you making yourself noticeable to me? Or I, I should be. Yeah. Yeah. He I says, just looked at Reza. We've and always just, yeah. known that there were trolls deeper into the darker parts of the forest, but they were never brave enough to come near the town. Not till well, not till the murders start happening. And now, now the foresters don't go out there, and and you know, a lot of the times the foresters would make so much noise. I think it kept the trolls away. You know, they were kind of intimidated. But now, recently, no one's been going out into the forest. The trolls are coming closer. I reckon they're going to attack the town soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, uh, I say thank you, and uh, I walk to Reza and I just go. Oh, the last troll. Remember the troll we fought? No. Mm. I wonder oh. if this has anything to do with that dwarven prince. Oh, we need... Excuse, excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah? Where, where have the attacks been occurring? Uh, northeast of here? Northwest of here? South? Anywhere well, in particular? I saw the trolls. All the trolls I've seen have been up northwards. By the says, yeah, but lake. What? tell them about the... Tell him about those bodies, those eviscerated ones. He said, yeah, there's something else going on, though. Because the trolls had probably... Well, no one's found any dead bodies when the trolls have been concerned, but we found corpses. People ripped to shreds. Looks like they've been torn to bits with sharp teeth. I'm going to kind of elbow Radovan. Like, like ravaged. Yeah, see what I was talking about? Yeah. Hmm. I mean... Some of the people that have been killed, well... He goes, one of them, he said, old, he goes, he used to, he goes, he's a forester now, retired, he said, but 
quite quite the swordsman in his day but we found him torn his back ripped clean open like whatever it was he didn't even know it was there before it got him didn't even have time to draw his sword hmm. i'm gonna be absent-mindedly like touching my shoulder that almost got rended just in memory <laughs> i'm gonna look at race and go we need to talk to the doors about it about this i mean maybe it has something to do top jaw thanks for follow buddy i don't know uh yeah. th thank you sir um know that we are pretend i mean I'm, I'm not gonna make any promises but we are on a mission with the dwarves in the company and it might have something to do with what's been happening here so there's a chance we might help you oh well, that'll be good you should but tell the mayor where is he down this road i mean he says that when you get to the crossroads turn right this is the nice house on the end of the street always the nice house huh okay thank you he says but uh he said something about if nobody came forward to help something about getting together some kind of reward Okay. Mm. If so, you know, if, if you do help, there might be something in it for you. Of course, yes. oh. I didn't tell you that, because he's a cheapskate and he'll probably try to convince you to help for free. Okay, so how about this? We entered your town before dusk arrived. Uh, yeah, you did, didn't you? You got here about, yep. an hour, got here about half right hour ago, curfew. right before dusk. Exactly, there you go. Yeah, sounds fair to me. All right, thank you, sir. All right. I'm gonna walk with Raisa, I guess, to the tavern. Alrighty, so you guys. I say we down. don't bring up the mayor. I'm gonna say to to Radavan, I say we don't bring up the mayor or very much of this conversation until we get some more information. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Let's take Not you even to Kia. inside the <sighs> the rusty spoon. Ooh, and the rusty spoon. The rusty spoon. Yep. I feel like I've seen this place before. I think we made this on a on a stream once, didn't you we? You did. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, this was one of the one. This is one of the maps that we made the other week. Um, nice. And if you notice, because I think it's cool, I'm going to point it out. Look above the fireplace. Oh yeah, the the giant spoon. There is a spoon. All right. <laughs> right. Um, we're going to go. F we're going to fast forward a little bit um, ahead of you guys. So Kia. Um, you went with the dwarves. As soon as they got there, they leapt off the cart, um, w flagged down a young lad that was a stable boy, and without so much as a word, just thrust the reins of all of the horses into his hands and tore straight inside the tavern. Okay. Um, so you walk in with the dwarves. Um, immediately, the dwarves go and sit at this large table and start bellowing and hollering Bring ale! Bring food! As much of it as you got! <laughs> Come on! We haven't got all day! We've been on the road for hours! And immediately they all start rallying around, dropping entire chickens, legs of, uh, legs of, um, legs of, like, ham, all kinds of stuff. Um, during this initial activity, what are you going to do, Kia? Um, I'll probably walk up to the bar and sit there instead, and, uh, all right. Just kind of hang out there. Okay. Well, there's ne the few that locals person. that are here are definitely paying a lot of attention to you and the dwarves as you come in. Okay. Um, everybody seems to have quietened down somewhat. Most of the noise in the tavern is actually coming from the dwarves, surprisingly enough. Okay. I'm just um, going to say sorry about them. Sorry about them. <laughs> you apologize for <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'll apologize um, for them. Well, about ten minutes later, Radavan and Racer come in. Um, Radavan and Racer, by the time you come in, the dwarves are already plowing through food and quaffing ale and, you know, and, and explaining to the locals what quaffing is and the fact that it's it's like drinking except you deliberately spill more. So they're just kind of plowing it down. And I, just like you've seen them before, just not a care in the world. It's laughter and jolliment and... Okay. Alright. Okay, uh, what do you two want to do? I'm going to walk right up and sit next to Kia. Yeah, I'm following. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a couple of... Get off my bar! <laughs> <laughs> they all buttoned. Got away from me. But okay. Yeah. So, you're, you're too heavy to walk on our bar. That's uh, true. I'll break it with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, now you take the robe off and we'll talk. No, um, 
<laughs> so he does go sit down. He says, What can I get for you? <clears throat> Sorry, what can I get for you? Water. Uh, water and whatever you serve here. He says, Well, um, we have a variety of fare available. The best one. The best one. Well, uh, are you a vegetarian? <laughs> no. Oh, last elf I met was. It's too bad for them. Oh, well, uh. Terry and P, thanks for the follow. It's not horse meat, is it? Oh, no. Ooh, All right. Thanks for the follow. Then I'm fine. He says, nope, uh, we can, I can do roast ham, roast chicken. Um, Anything is fine as long as it's not pies. horse. Get, bring the chicken, you know. Yeah. Please. Fine then. Okay. And I'm so just going to kind of say... Yeah, the serving girl go and basically bring three whole chickens and just sit them down in front of you. Do you meet a lot of elves? Um, actually, we have more than our fair share here, probably. Hmm. Due to the temple, you see. Well, temple, such as it is, church. I'm going to look at him like, tell me yeah. more? Like, eh? <laughs> mm -hmm. My pointy ears perk up. This yes, is, um, we lean in. Well, uh... We have a church to Ilona here. You know. Ilona. Ah. Yes. Can, can I do a religion check? You certainly can. I, I need to do these more often. Or, um, or you can just choose to take a ten on it, and I'll give you the basics. Because you take a take a ten. No, I'm gonna get more than that. <laughs> Whoa, there's a challenge. First twenty right here. Oh, so more than ten, ten in your mind is a seven, is it? <laughs> I'll take the ten. Oh, 17. Okay, I'll take so, the 10. Okay, um, so you, 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 know, you know that it's something to do. You remember, it's like, oh, God, I can't. It's on the top, tip of my tongue. Um, you know that Elona is something to do with nature and forests and stuff, but you don't really have a lot of, for some reason, the details are escaping you right now. <laughs> Should have took a 10. <laughs> uh, I'm out of my element. I'm at a bar and drinking water. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh Okay. I'm gonna glance around to see if I see any elves just hanging out. Um, nope. Nobody nope. else. Basically, there, there is, you know, you've got about half a dozen or so humans, uh, a lot of which are female. In fact, um, there's two, uh, kind of two elderly looking women reading books by the fire. Um, there's two women over here by on this table. Um, there's a girl here, a girl here. In fact, the women seem to outnumber the men about three to one. Ix, if you take the dwarves out of the picture. Okay. We don't we don't count dwarves anyway, right? So I'm just going to lean in because the barkeep was going to continue talking. I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to look at him. <laughs> right. Okay. He says, "Yeah, we have you know several elves come through because of the temple. Because a lot Where's of elves apparently worship Elona." Is there has there been any trouble recently? Huh. I've, nothing but, nothing but. Well, we're, we're I'm we need information about what has been afflicting this town. So anything you can tell me, being you know a master of the tavern, you probably hear all sorts of stories. He kind of glances to the left and right, looking at looking at everybody, and then he kind of does the customary barkeep as he leans in, <laughs> <laughs> beckons you a little bit. He says. Yep. The forest has become haunted, or worse. There's no one dare venture more than a few hundred yards, and definitely not after dusk. Some people have come up missing, some have been found dead, all in the last two weeks. One of the guards seems to think that he's seen trolls, but I'm telling you, this ain't trolls responsible for this. This is something heinous and evil, tearing people apart with its teeth. The worst of it is... These are all big, strong men. And usually they're found dead and eviscerated. Sometimes, axe is still in the tree. One of our strongest, toughest... Oh, he used to be a hero of sorts. He went accompanying him. You know, just to make sure nothing bad happened. He was found with his back torn open. Like, big, huge chunks ripped out of his shoulders. He didn't even have his sword drawn. Whatever it is, hits quiet and fast. Doesn't sound like trolls to me. It's too sophisticated. Maybe something that's cursed? 
Or do you possibly. think it's a, a monster, like an actual beast kind of monster? Well, it's something, all right. Uh, would anyone in this town know more? Well, um, Elsbeth was... she. I mean, she's given a couple of sermons to people, and she, she seems to think that whatever it is is something seriously unnatural. Hmm. Give us where she lives, the place of her residence, please. Uh, end of the road, the church. In she's the church. A, oh, sorry, she's the priestess. She's the priestess oh. of Ilona. Okay. Give me mail, thanks for the follow. So, uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> oh, Winston, thanks for the follow. At which point he leans back up and says, uh, Yes, yeah, so if there's anything else I can get you. Uh. And immediately kind of going back to his. You, know, you can kind of figure out this guy he has like a, a he loves drama like a, a voice that he's putting on like a professional yeah. I'm a, trying to be a little bit better than I am but when he gets excited the accent like you know it comes back and that country <laughs> comes through uh, Kia yes how about you try to get more information about where exactly we're going where this dwarven prince is from the dwarven friends over there and okay. I will go talk to this priestess. You will. Okay. You know she's an elf, right? Rayso, you want to come with me? <laughs> uh, uh, you can see me kind of like revert to the structure. <laughs> um, uh, I'll take charge. I mean, I'll, you know, approach it religiously. Maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna look to Kia, like kinda tell me what to do. Go with him. Your 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 ears might help the situation. Okay. Yeah, but Kia, you can charm the dwarves. They're drinking, uh find out You're, where exactly the Are you giving guy me is. permission to t charm a dwarf? No, no, not charm, like no. <laughs> I, well, got really I don't think excited he means actually cast. I don't mean cast charm. Oh I my mean, gosh. Use I your so feminine wiles, you know? Or something. You shouldn't have asked. Oh, yeah, you, dwarves better, don't better like to me, they beg just... forgiveness and ask permission, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I just had to clarify because I got Oh, just whatever. I'm just gonna right. I'm just gonna get up and leave. What am I looking doing. for again? I'm not even answering. I, I just. I'm gonna say uh, more information about the the prince and what they know about him. All right. Him. Thanks, Racer. I'm gonna follow Radovan. Okay, so Radovan and Racer are heading out of the tavern to head down to the church. Uh, and what's Kia doing? I'm gonna go talk to the dwarves. All right. Let's start with you then, soon as you're here, right. and you'll be get, you'll be acting first. Walk over and plop down right here. Okay. And I'll grab a piece of chicken, like I'm just there to, you know, eat with them. Right, one of them, like, just slides a, a mug across in front of you. It kind of... Catch it! A good bit of it spills out. I go, here, here. They, You know, continue with their bits of gravy hanging from their beard as they're... <laughs> guzzling I say, their here, food. here, and pretend to take a huge sip, but only take a little sip. Right. One was like this. Um, to look like I'm, like, really in, but you into try it. The I'm really you know? too. <sighs> what was that? Uh, Try the ham! Oh, of course, of course. I take a piece of ham, and as we're eating, I'm like, So, tell me more. Tell me more about your prince. He goes, What, before or after? Ah, uh, both. Well, before? He goes, The prince. He goes, Great, big, strong, fine, fine, fine specimen of a dwarf. He goes, Destined to be the he goes destined to be king. Well, as we told you before, him and some friends went out to deal with a wee menace that we had going on in the foothills. They took care of it, or so we thought. And he come back, and as we were telling you, all of a sudden he started letting this madness look in his eye, and one day just lost his mind and started tearing apart some of his friends. And before what was we had time wee to menace. Sorry? What was the wee menace that you were taking care of? Ah, well, I wasn't, he goes, this company here, we didn't have nothing to do with it. Goes, but he was, he went and it was some kind of, some kind of beast. Some foul, nasty beast with big pointy teeth. Um, and, um, <laughs> sorry, I had, had to pop, there, there's well your played. pop culture well for the played. night. Um, <laughs> it is the rabbit! No. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, Radovan's gonna soil his armor. <laughs> <laughs> he says, 
But anyway, it afflicted him with some kind of curse or madness. Well, after that, he fled. And rumor has it that he fled to these forests. So here we are. Because we sent out one company. Some of his friends went to find him, to bring him back. When they encountered the beast, they said that they ne'er could do no damage to it. It like, the wound seemed to just heal up all by themselves and he had the ability to like vanish and reappear almost suddenly. An hideous nasty looking creature he was. Well, only one of the, one of the original company came back alive. And that's when Gaffer Ironbeard summoned us and said that we would go and put our prince to rest as it is the honorable thing to do. So who is the one that was left alive? He was, he was, he never was the same. He has lost an arm. He was, he's not with us. Where is he? He was back at the hold, back in the mountains. And I'm guessing you questioned him plenty, As right? much as we could. But this is why we keep telling you, ain't no lycanthrope, ain't no werewolf we're after. I know you think that that's what it is, but I'm telling you it ain't. No, we, we've... Some of us have fought things like that before. He, goes, he did say that he plunged a dagger made of purest silver into it. Didn't have a darn bit of effect on the creature. And you haven't tried magic use. And that's why you got and me. And that's where you come in, lassie. That's why we got you. And you don't know where he is? Just the forests around here? Well, from what we've been hearing some of these locals talk about, sounds like it's a pretty fair idea that it might be locally around there somewhere. And how do you suppose we kill this thing if it just disappears and it reappears at your throat? And again, that's where you come in. <laughs> you think I could just see things? I can't. I can't see invisible things. Uh, the, the guy sitting here, covered in the tattoos, he yeah. says... <clears throat> well, I can. What? I'm bestowed with the powers of the All Father. So you can see this thing? If I pray to the All Father appropriately, I. So you will guide us there. And tell us no. when you see him. You will tell us when you see him. No. No? Like how it works. How does it work? When it comes out to try to feast upon one of us, that's when I'll do it. And once I can find it and see where it is, that's when you'll do what you do and kill the damn thing. So someone's gonna die. Yeah, probably. Probably. Probably us. All right. But well, that's good to know. To Any of what? us that are left alive are pledged <laughs> to your service. What else can you do? Are you a magic user? I am a priest of the All Father. All Father. The All Father. I am unfamiliar with this. Moradin. The Dwarven God. All right. What else can you do? I saw that you used light on the bear. Eh. Just a wee, just a wee, ma wee, wee bit of holy magic. Stay next to me while we venture into the forest. He kind of looks at you with a raised eyebrow. He goes, I'll probably be in the thick of it. He goes, unlike some religions, Moradain doesn't be, doesn't behold with standing back and watching. He goes, we get down and dirty. He goes, we get in the thick of the fight. I can't have you dying on me. I need you to be problem. my eyes. He goes, dwarves are going to do what dwarves do. Your job isn't to keep us alive. Your job is to kill it. Right, which I can't do unless you tell me, so well, good luck, I guess. If we, When I see it, I'll point to it. Alright. Because from what I understand, you'll probably see it. But once we do see it, someone's dying. Just okay. hope it ain't you. In fact, we probably got to make sure it isn't you. Yeah, yeah that's wise. Alright, I'm going to st start eating again and just thinking about it. Alrighty. Okay, we're going to take a quick break <laughs> before we head out. I love your boy score. So good. So, um, we left with Kieliana discussing all things pleasant with dwarves. 
And we are going to go outside as Radavan and Eraser. Yep. All right. Down the street to the church. Are is the doors open? First question. Uh, when you get there, no, the door is closed. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do that. I gotta do the oi. Okay. Um, oh well, the door um, rather promptly is opened by a um, young girl. Uh, she's probably about 15, if that. She kind of looks up at you because she's very short. She's about four foot nine. And she says, Um, yes? <laughs> I'm gonna nudge Raysa. <laughs> It's a girl. It's a little kid, so, you know. Rather than doesn't get on with children. Rachel. Um, what's the girl's name that we're looking for again? Uh. Don't know. She, look, you're you're we're not looking, there anyway, Jane. So the you priestess. Can't tell them. Oh, you can't sorry. Tell them. You can't tell them. <laughs> we're, we're looking for the main priestess. Oh, uh, Priestess Elsbeth. There, there we go, her. Yes. Uh, can I tell her who's come to see her? Who's come to visit? Uh, my name is Radovan Rainier, uh, a friend. Yeah, it's kind of like self cringe a little bit. I'll be right back. Uh, you can come in. <laughs> thank, thank you. And she escorts you kind of just into the foyer. I'm going to kind of like say to Radovan, don't say my name. <laughs> Why? Just don't. She's not, she's not going to smite you or anything. I don't understand. <laughs> just don't. Okay. I won't, but... A couple of minutes later, the girl comes back out from one of the, one of the side halls with a um, very kind of elegantly dressed um, lady. She has long, bra- um, kind of long braided hair. She has a bow over her shoulder uh, with no arrow, strangely enough. Um, and she's wearing like a white dress with like a rope um, belt. But on closer examination, it's obviously made of something other than rope, but it's got that kind of rope braid to it. She kind of walks up to you and just smiles politely. And she says, welcome to the church of Elona. Hi. Um, my, my name is Radovan Rainier, uh, priest uh, of St. Cuthbert. I noticed this. And I'm here in town with some friends. And much thanks for the following. You know, uh, I, I, I guess you could say acquaintances. They're dwarves. I mean, whatever that. On means. Take it to follow. <laughs> ah, and what and brings what brings a priest of Saint Cuthbert and some dwarves to our little hamlet? Uh, well, honestly, my impression is we're passing through. Uh, the dwarves have a problem with their prince, and they've enlisted the help of my one of my friends, a sorceress, and it's taken us along this path. Hmm. So, if you're just passing through, why would you come and knock on the doors of this church at such a late hour? D- Clearly you have some kind of question to ask me, or want to know something? Well, did I wake you? Because if so, I apologize. Oh, not at all. I'd, I'd not retired yet. Okay, so the hour of the day doesn't really matter, but I... Well, the church, I, you know, we, we were we were not expecting visitors, but... I'm wondering if the troubles your town has had recently has anything to do with our mission with the dwarves. Hmm. So I'm here looking for evidence or information about what you think might be afflicting the forestry to the north of here. Well, I don't know exactly what it is that's afflicting us, but I do know that it is something alien to this forest. It is not something natural to the area. And All the animals are up in arms. Most of them are hiding. The birds don't fly. Clearly something has the local populace spooked. And I have heard rumors, and I believe it possibly be more than just rumor, that some forest trolls have been getting a little bit braver than they should. So there are trolls to the north, because your gate person mentioned he saw a few of them. He is fond of drinking, so many assume that what he says is probably... A result of that? I don't think so. You see, normally when people tell stories of giants or trolls, they over-exaggerate. 
he said that these trolls were eight foot tall. Forest trolls are not as big as regular trolls. So I okay. do believe it, it kind of fits. It's, it's probable that he did see something. Okay. But I don't believe the trolls are the menace that faces us so much as the aftermath of what faces us. Did anything happen a couple of weeks ago when these problems first began? Anything of note? Like, did anybody pass through the town that was strange or weird? Not that oh. I recall. The, okay. the incident happened that every day the foresters get up at the crack of dawn, head into the woods, and usually they come back just after sundown. They go usually in small groups. However, one small group did not come back. The following day, they went looking and found them all, for want of a better word, eviscerated. Not the work of trolls. After that, thinking that it may have been a one-off incident, people, would, albeit more cautiously, continued to venture into the forest and more deaths happened. Since then, now the foresters only travel in a few hundred yards and they make sure that they are back before dusk. And how many people do you reckon has been killed by this creature? Oh, how I've administered last rites to every one of them. Those that we know have been killed has been six so far. There are three bodies unaccounted for. So nine total. Okay. And it's, it was on a daily occurrence that this happened? Or any cyclical thing? Like maybe every third day? Maybe every second day? Um, the first day it happened that we lost three. Then we lost two the second day. People didn't go out the third or fourth day, then thinking that the menace may have passed, some people went out and we lost another one the next day. Okay. So really no pattern, just any time anyone has ventured into the forests and have been left out after dusk. So if we were to hunt this thing, my friends and I, you would suggest we go at night? Because if nothing comes out during the day... Oh, absolutely. So we'd If you're looking to, to find the beast, all of the deaths have happened clearly... At night. At night. Okay. Thank you. I, I will not... I will trouble you no more. I have one more piece of information that might be of assistance. Okay, sure. Um, as I said, I administered last rites and did examine several of the bodies before we buried them. And... Whatever it is, doesn't appear to use any kind of weaponry. The damage all appeared to have been done with extremely sharp and ravenous teeth. So I expect what you're looking for is some kind of animalistic thing. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna just, you know, give a little respectful nod and start backing away, looking at race all the while. Okay, she kind of just looks at the girl and so, smiles at you politely and turns around and walks off. And the girl walks up to the door and holds it as you, you know, to kind of shut the door behind you. Okay, I'm going to leave and look at Risa. Wait for her. Alrighty. Uh, well. <laughs> I have an idea about how we can possibly hunt this thing down. Don't know if it'll work, though. But that's if, that's if we even want to hunt it down, Risa. I don't know if that's even on your radar. I mean, not radar. I would say radar. If it's on your mind, maybe you maybe you don't. So It's not invented yet. I just noticed Radar's that the tavern it. chatter was extremely loud that you thought you could still hear it all the way here at the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all it's being dwarves, man. Yeah, dwarves, it's, uh, it's yeah. all the dwarves we right? heard. Uh, Risa, you're muted, I think. Yes, I was, sorry. Uh, I have a feeling that this creature is the dwarven prince. So I think it's our problem, no matter how much we don't want it to be. Okay. Well, we're going to have to uh, inform the dwarves of this, and my, my idea is, has something to do with not being caught off guard. Um, we go to a spot where it's been known to attack, we chop down the trees up to a stump, and then we form like a human chain around the tree stump, so there's nothing that can get us from behind, and we just, you know, keep eyes on each other 
respective, you know, and in like cones, right, of awareness. Mm -hmm. And we stay close enough together. So if it approaches, we'll see it coming from any angle. So it can't get a jump on us and it can't jump through the trees and, you know, but I just uh, off the top of my head, an idea. I don't know. Good idea. I don't know what the door. Dwarves would say, but we I wait think for it, you know? Most definitely talk to the dwarves and come up with a plan before we. I have a feeling if it's dwarf plan, it will be barrel into the woods. <laughs> uh, make no, yeah, make all noise in the world. Yeah, yeah. so may, we definitely have to talk to them beforehand and okay, make well, sure they adhere to our plan. Well, I mean, it, it, that's if it's a feasible plan. I don't even know that. Like, what if we found like a rock or something? We just all be around the rock like in a ring, but. All right. I don't know. A rock is easily land upon, but true. Yep. I'm not in this conversation, am I? No. Yeah, let, uh, we're gonna, are we're gonna, we're walking are we back, back yet. Um, yeah. I'm assuming we're walking and talking. Yeah. Okay. So once you get back to the rusty spoon. Okay. So I want to do something once we get back, and and um, Shagat starts talking. Okay. I'm assuming we're gonna sit down at the table. Is that right, Shagat? Okay, so when we sit down, I want to kind of like dig through my stuff and find my book that I have okay. and see if there's anything in that book that might be useful. I? As in information about some weird disappearing creature. Okie dokie. Alright, well, uh, there you are. You're in the tavern. Are you, on the, are you guys on the map? Yeah, we're on the okay. map. Is, is there anywhere to actually sit without like crowding? Um, I mean... It's kind of crowded on the Kia side, so someone's going to have to like. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can, you know, you, you can see how it's going to work. So there, I'll move over, Rado. You can sit by me. There, Rado. I moved it so that corner. you don't have to sit by the dwarfs. Oh, thanks. That's how thoughtful. <laughs> dwarf girl, dwarf girl, shag it. <laughs> <laughs> girl? Question mark? Question. All right. Alrighty. So you guys sit down with the dwarfs. Okay. We break the bench. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna clear my throat. <clears> throat> they all kind of look at you and, and stand with their glasses in hand, like bated breath, waiting for you to speak. There is, there's a, there's something in the forest to the north of here that's been killing the people of this town. It's mysterious in nature, and it seems to fit with what Kia has told me has happened to your prince. Hmm. Well, I suppose we go kill the beast then. Uh, or should we say, lay it to rest? Okay, so how do you propose we do this? We just wander into the woods. It, it apparently only attacks at nighttime, so. All right. There's that. So, seems like the plan's fairly simple then. We wander into the woods at night, wait for it to attack, and we kick its ass. <laughs> how are we going to wait for it? Should we? I, I think we should lay a trap for it. A trap? Like yes. what? Um, we get to a portion of the woods where the forestry is a little bit clearer, not as much trees. Um, you, we hack down some of the trees so there's no nothing that it could come up from above, like create a clearing. We um, circle around the tree, you know, like interlocking fashion, so we have eyes in every direction and we're close together. Span those rollies for our new subscriber. Oh, oh. Hey, Jessamy, okay. thanks for Jessamy. Thank Jessamy, you man. For the Yay, subs. Jess. Hi, welcome. Appreciate it, dude or dudette, whichever you are. I believe dudette. Dudette. Jess, 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 Jess. Appreciate it. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, I'm gonna uh, like raise my hand. I could go in the middle. Wouldn't that make sense? What of makes the circle? sense? Is it you stay alive, Missy? Right, so shouldn't you You're put me in the middle? You're the killing this thing. I'd be the most protected, wouldn't I? Probably. How about you keep me in the middle, rather than? I think that's a good idea. That would work. I don't want to be all, you know, like put me in the middle because I'm worth saving, but I feel Everything like it might... Everything in your book refers to know. pretty much animals or plants and stuff like that, all natural stuff. There's really nothing <laughs> in there that might hint towards... Strange, mystical, evil things, unfortunately. <laughs> Dang. And I'm going to point to the tattooed one, I guess, above his head, and say, this one can see it. He kind of looks at it and goes, I, I, have the, I have the ability to detect invisibility. So, how about we 
slowly rotate the circle while we're standing there so he can constantly be seeing different angles. That sounds... Not, not quickly so we don't yes. make you know, ourselves dizzy. My head turns 180 degrees. This is not like detect magic. I cast it and I can just see it. I can just look around. I don't have to detect nothing. What about right behind you? Well, I can look behind me and look over my shoulder. Because it's really this simple. If something starts ripping me limb from limb from the back, you probably want to just yell and let me know. <laughs> well, no, our, we'd have a tree stump. In, like, right in... Well, I guess we could do it without the tree stump with just key in the middle. Yeah. That can work too. Yeah. This sounds just... awfully complicated. <laughs> I'd it's rather... protecting we, us. <laughs> yeah, we'd all be protecting each other. So there'd be no, you know, it coming from behind and ripping our throats out or something, you know? Okay, the, all the dwarves kind of start looking at each other rather puzzled, like, what? Look, I'm going to say, this is a good you, idea, guys. This you sounds guys, awfully, this, this sounds awfully complicated. If you guys go, okay, how about this? We Since we'd be going, uh, we'd probably leave in the afternoon-ish, right? There. Because we'd want to start hunting it at nighttime. Um... I buy all your drinks for tonight, if you go along with this plan tomorrow. Yes, we're gonna find our own drinks. Yes, we'll go along with your plan if it makes sense. But I don't you know really what's understand more complicated. The the ring thing. What's more complicated than that is planning funerals for five dwarves. We'll explain it better as we're walking there. I we're probably a little Ooh. wee bit too drunk to understand right now. Explain it to us in the morning in when the we're morning. a bit more uh, level-headed. Alright. Uh, Alright, late morning because, you know, you're gonna need your beauty sleep. And you're gonna have, need your strength to hack down some trees. Alrighty. Bad for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll plant some afterwards. There you go, yeah. Uh, appease the Church of Elona. Yes. Trust me, it's a wood faring town. They've cut down their fair share of trees. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys want to do for the rest of the evening? Uh, I'm gonna buy a room. To okay. Rest for the night. You're gonna buy a whole room. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a permanent. Room. Oh, just gonna take out room. a share a of the inn. I really it like is. Skeldergate as a name. I'll be honest with you guys. You know, it's maybe really this is good. my new home. So, no, I'm gonna rent a room for the night with a bath. I'm gonna relax. Hi. That's how I. So, a room with soon. a bath will cost you five silver for the night. Done. I will do the same. Just all right. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> Yay, bath hype. Syndicate's third nipple ring. Thank you for the follow. Nah, you didn't think I'd <laughs> Best say that, name did you? ever. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that massive long name come up. Oh dear. Okay. Um. So Racer gets a room as well. Yes, please. What about Kia? Yeah, same. Five silver ahead then for your rooms. <laughs> and is everybody retiring or? I am retiring. Yeah, I'm done. I day. think before I go to the room, I would like to just quickly inquire with the innkeeper if there's anywhere to buy horses around. Um, he says, well, um, we don't actually have um, a stable or a, a horse breeder here, but um, the mayor probably has a few spare horses to purchase. Thank you. And off I go. Alrighty. <laughs> Kia. Yes. You want to stay there and enjoy the company of the dwarves? No, or are you... <laughs> no, no. I'm, I also rented a room with the oh, bath. I just sent a dwarf off, not Kia off. <laughs> and another dwarf. Kia, you're in the way. Get out of here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. Come on. The dwarves on the table. Dwarves on the table. Dwarves on the table. They're getting pretty like Larry little, now. Yeah, they're, they're doing a they're little pulling jig. a Frodo Sam. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by now the dwarves are are in full flow. They're they're really getting hyper and loud and obnoxious. But um, once again, you all retire to your tavern rooms. Into the early hours, you hear the merriment of the dwarves continue. And bright and early the following morning, you come descending down the stairs to see once again, with no surprise. <laughs> The dwarves are slumped over the table. <laughs> this is how they can afford it. They don't ever get rooms. They just spend it all on oh booze and food. <laughs> oh, 
Oh dear. And they They're keep all complaining just about there. being out traveling for hours and hours, and they slump over in a bench, no less. <laughs> Dwarves are hardcore. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go over here and just look at the dwarves with kind of disdain. I'm gonna go over to the bar and say, let me get uh, something for breakfast for them, the dwarves. N not us? <laughs> yeah, no, you, you the dwarves. Okay. Give he me says, a plate uh, of something. Oh, absolutely. Um, and he kind of clicks his fingers at a couple of the, the, the serving girls and they start hustling around and within five to ten minutes there's, you know, big platters of like sausages and eggs and bacon and all kinds of stuff just loaded up on the table. First breakfast. <clears throat> they go, <clears throat> the dwarves are all like, breakfast is served. They wipe spit and vomit from their beards. Ew. A couple of them kind of dip their hands in some of the stale ale and use it to You're not even noticing the breakfast wash it up and oh. then immediately after that they're like mm. <laughs> and they start in again all right fetch yes. some uh, beer yeah. wait bring the ale no 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 beer today we have a mission Here's exactly a... what no saying dwarf goes off on an empty stomach he goes one of the other dwarves that doesn't speak very often he leans in he goes it wouldn't do any good anyway miss they all carry at least five or six <laughs> bottles with them. Uh, okay. I'm just going to look at Raysa. I shifted seats so I don't have to look at them. <laughs> Radovan looks at them and says, you thought I had a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's what I'm, I'm looking at Raysa right now. Just when I'm like... Mm. I'll kind of roll my eyes. <laughs> Alrighty. <sighs> well, they stuff themselves silly, have a couple of flagons of ale, and then after a while... The uh, the leader Gaffer Ironbeard slides himself out from the bench, <clears throat> stands up. As soon as he does so, almost immediately they all put their flagons of ale down, stop eating, and almost in unison, <sniffs> I'll stand up. <laughs> he says, "Let's go put a prince to sleep," and they all kind of Do -do -do. follow him out, follow him out the door. Cool. Well, guess that's our cue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, it's bright and early. It's still first thing in the morning. Well, we got some trees to hack and a place to scout out. You know, it might not be bad getting a strategy with them. Find a place, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you, do we, Raisa, do you want to see the mayor first, or are we just going to go? Real CK, thanks for the follow. I will go with you, Radovan. Kia, do you want to come with, too? Talk to the oh, mayor. Oh, Chronic, thanks for the follow. No. Okay, so you no. guys want to go talk to the mayor before you head off into the No. <laughs> just like, no. Kia, has, Kia wasn't privy to the conversation, so she has well, no idea. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that's true. Okay. Like, why would I want to talk to the mayor? Good point. All right, let's go see the mayor. All righty. So, Raysa and Radavan, you wish to go and see... We're off to see the mayor, the wonderful mayor of ours. Okay, putting you here. And Kia, you are down here with the company of dwarves. Yes. Alright, so you guys go to the mayor's house. Oi! Okay, the door is opened by a man wearing a long white um, gown. Please tell me. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's got a, a cap on, and he kind of opens the door looking rather sleepy. He's like... Yes? Are you the mayor? Isn't it? Uh, this is important. Are you the mayor? I am. My name is Radovan Rainier. Um, there's a high probability my party and I are going into the forest to deal with your monster or whatever it is. Oh, oh, really? Yes. Oh, may we, excellent. May we come in discuss possible terms? Oh, um, terms? Um, well, uh, uh, yes, I suppose so. Come on, come on. Uh, you've caught me a little bit off guard, I'm afraid. Haven't even had time to get dressed yet. That's okay. You look you look quite dapper in those um, oh. you know slippers. Yes, whatever. Well, uh, follow me into the your kitchen. onesies. Your onesies, if I may say so. My jumper. <laughs> yeah. Jumper. Do you like the, the little jumper. bunny ears? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, he he kind of leads you into the kitchen. He says, um, there's some there's some cold meat and cheese in the refrigerator. If you're hungry, I suppose. No, Is there a refrigerator? That's badass. It says yes. 
Wait, what? It's not what you're expecting, trust me. <laughs> it's a, it's just an ice box, right? Yeah. There's a giant <laughs> ice block in there. All right. Right. <laughs> it's a Hoover. So I'm gonna add, no. I, I don't know. Um, he says, can no, you nip down to Starbucks and get me a cappuccino? No, um. Is that number two on the yeah, menu? No, basically, oh. he has like a little little room that's right. kind of stone and cold storage. <laughs> I was just bugging you, Gore. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he says, uh, help yourselves. So, uh, you're going to go and kill this thing, then. These things, whatever. Um, myself, two of my friends, and a party of dwarves. Oh, yes. So there's plenty of you. Well, you might succeed. Well, it's a dangerous job, you know? I mean, I... Well, not for so many, I'm sure. Not hardened, battle-weary folk and priests of St. Cuthbert. Ah, so you recognize my insignia. I do indeed. Okay. Um, I heard tale that you might offer a reward. Um, For really? the service. I hadn't yeah. broadcast such a fact. Who told you that? Uh, some of the locals, I don't know. They, it was in passing. Over oh, yes, they would, wouldn't they? Well, yes, I did. I did mention that um, if somebody was willing to take care of this, that I would, um, I would offer up an, a, war, a reward in advance, and then, of course, I'll just tax everybody to recuperate it later. Well, how much would you think that such a service would be worth? Well, uh, I was thinking a hundred gold crowns would be probably ample. Uh, nine of your citizens have been found dead. Yes, I know. Ten gold apiece and a bonus ten for the one that'll probably get killed tomorrow. Seems a little light, don't you? No, I well, just look uh, at this, uh... um, I suppose I can pay more. I can tax them harder. I don't know that they're going to be able to afford to pay it, though. Might, might, might prove for rather tough times for the citizens, but... Um, if I'm gonna that's mutter, what you demand. I'm going to mutter under my breath. Well, if you want a town to be the mayor of. <laughs> do, do I hear this? Um, I you hear probably this? did, yeah, because you're used to those kind of <laughs> quips. Risa, it's on... Uh, look, I... Uh, um, uh, I suppose, I mean, I can... 150, then. I'll just extend the taxes. Oh, that's fine with me. That'll be done. Yes, well, uh, I will be sure to tell the local townsfolk that you have killed the creature and saved them, but of course, explain also that the increased taxes are to help pay for the saving of the town. Well, that's on you. D Dog, thanks for the follow. DB Res, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Risa with oh, that sassy mouth going on here. Oh, what does she care? Sassy her problem. She doesn't have to have the conscience. Well, and I don't like being blamed for his problem, so I'm just kind of throwing right. little, like, jabs. I mean, it's not, you're not, it's not a law. I mean, all right, the you way got a deal. Things. You got a deal. It's just, fair enough. Excellent. Bring me, well, kill the thing. Bring me proof. Whatever type of proof it is, and I will give you your reward. All right, a hundred and fifty gold crowns. Can okay. I, can I sense motive to see if he's actually intending to keep his promise? Um, you can make a dice roll. Yes, make a sense motive check. Hmm. Uh, I mean. It's not a huge amount of money, and he's obviously not intending to fork it out himself. Like, he'll pay in advance, so... Maybe. The odds are he's <laughs> not likely to argue with you guys should you succeed. He'd be a bit of an idiot. He doesn't have a militia or anything to back him up, so... <laughs> it's a problem with these towns. They never have any fighting forces worth a damn. Alright, I'm just gonna walk out. I'm that's done. That's what the big palisade wall is for. That's <laughs> that's, 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 that's what it's it. for. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna head out? Yep. So as we leave, I'm gonna say to Radovan, um, I asked the innkeeper last night about maybe getting horses, and he mentioned that the mayor was probably our best chance. Maybe when oh. we get back, we can barter the price lower in exchange for horses. And that'll make the townspeople a little bit less burdened, too. Yeah. Yeah, all right, that's a good idea. Let's do that. All righty. Okay, so, I'm going to walk back to the dwarves. All right, well, they're all, you know, settled up and ready, and crossbow bolts at the ready, axes handy. 
as well. Let's go and put someone to rest then. All right. Uh, leave you out said the... it was in the north, did you? Yeah, leave out the west gate and go north, I guess, into the forest. Next to the lake, maybe. All right. So, you all stomp your way out of the gate and head past the lake into the woods. Well, the woods themselves, um, I mean, it's it's fairly, the trees are not overly dense. I mean, it's kind of, especially not in this area. Let me put you guys here. Um, now, do, are you guys letting the dwarves take the, take the lead or are you taking the lead? What's the game plan? We should take the lead. So maybe they'll listen to us because they'll think we're the leader of the party. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Sounds That's good great. to me. Then I will put some dwarves behind you. Okay. Well, you stomp your way through the woodland realm for several hours. Um, everywhere around you, you can see um, a lot of trees that have been felled. Doesn't look like they've actually tried to clear any areas. They've picked a tree here and a tree there, trying to be kind of conservative, somewhat of nature, probably the influencing pressure of the priest of, priestess of Elona. Um, about midday, you've kind of traipsed around a pretty large area. Um, the the Dwarven Priest, Karen, says, I don't think it'll do us any good to just keep going straight for too long. We we'll probably want to just kind of circle around a bit. Cover the I, biggest area as we can. I, this thing attacks at night, so I want to find a suitable place to fight and set up. Um, well, if we want to fight somewhere, we want a clearing, somewhere we can all gather around then. Yes. So let's look for a suitable clearing, and then we'll have lunch or whatever, and prepare. Okay. So you all kind of start picking through the trees, trying to find an area that's not quite so cumbersome. Um, everybody make a spot check for me, please. Okay. Go, go, go. Let's move you Hey-o! Oh. Radavan's what? Radavan's eyeballs. hey <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Look at Kia, man, with a 23. God damn it. Okay. Radav uh, Kia with a 23 and Radavan. Okay. Radavan and Kia. Um, as you guys are walking around looking for a cl sensible clearing, you kind of come to an area where it seems like there is, you know, like right here, there's a fairly large clearing between the trees. Mm. Um, however, as the dwarves are kind of walking around... This looks like it'll do. This is going to plenty of rain. We can see stuff coming, this, something, the other. You notice that the tree, like something moving in some of the trees, like some of the upper limbs rustling a little bit. Uh... In multiple trees, like from here, and here, and here. I'm so going to... The, these kind of areas. I'm going to say form a circle right now, guys. Okay. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like right here, like... I'm going to face, you know, the trees and just... Right. So you guys kind of form up. Um, the dwarves don't really form a circle so much as more like just suddenly ready up. Uh, kind of like just... And start glancing around. Like they're not trees. particularly fond of... You see the trees? Understanding orders. <laughs> <laughs> I would have pulled up my bow as soon as Radovan okay. And Kia, you're pointing at the trees, you said? Yeah. Okay. Fucking dwarves, man. They don't listen. They're useless. They're dwarves. They're useless. They don't listen. They have their own agendas. <laughs> They're stubborn folk. Okay. Well, suddenly, bursting out of the treetops. Oh, man. Oh, God. Jeez. Um, these Burn are them. indeed not the same size of trolls as you've seen before. They're... They're like very big humans. Um, they are green and gnarly. And they have kind of like long protruding noses. And they smell. Oh. And they basically leap from the treetops like they've got some kind of innate climbing ability. 
as they land amongst you. Um, they're, you're not surprised because you kind of noticed them before. Can I get two shots off quick, quick? Um, Am I lucky enough? Where are you? You are here. Okay, yep. You can shoot at this one that's like right there in front of you, lands directly awesome. in front and of you. What is the distance of each square? Um, they would be 10 feet squares. Nice. nice okay, nice. Um, so you can make, um, as he jumps out, basically you can get a single shot off as your um, opportunity. Okay. Do it, Razor! I believe in you! 15. I believe in you a little less! Okay, you fire! <laughs> fire my trolls. Okay, the arrow goes flying through the air, um, but whistles just above the troll's shoulder as he kind of like quite quickly shh, like leans to the side to make it miss, like almost reactively. Um, a lot faster and quicker than the last trolls you meant that you invent or encountered. Possibly, maybe these guys are a little faster and quicker and not quite so big and gnarly and strong. Who knows? You haven't encountered these kind of trolls before. But one thing's for sure, we need some initiatives. Bam, Jeez. there's mine. And coming in at a 17. I'm going to come in oh! at a 7. <laughs> Racer. Yay. Rado with a 7. I'm at 11. Oh, yeah. no, at a 2. At yeah, yeah Rado's with a 2. Wow. 2? I was looking at the other end of that. Oh, well. You're <laughs> awesome, dude. Cheater. Okay, our dwarves are going right here next to Kia. Oh, my God, my rolls. And... Let's see where my trolleys are going. Oh, they're first. Oh, no. Okay. The trolls leap into action extremely quickly and extremely rapidly. Um, this troll right here dives straight in and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Radovan. Yo, bring it. Swinging wildly with his two ape-like gangly arms. Bring it a little less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Love to that. What's your current AC, Rado? Uh, it's 22 right now. I have no magical stuff right, on okay. it. Right, okay. He swings wildly and we bring the shield up to deflect the first claw. Um, the second one comes crashing down almost exactly in the same place like he was literally trying to rip your face off. So both of them hit the shield, and you're just kind of like buckled slightly under the sheer force of the blow. Son of a bitch. Um, Eraser, you are right there. You've got one leaping at you. Uh, what is your current armor, your AAC? 16. Okay. Um, alas, against one of these things, you are hit twice. Um, the first blow... Um, does six points of damage the second does seven however i'm going to need you to make a saving throw a fortitude save with a difficulty of 17 required Ooh. Yes. and that'll do it okay no. um you notice as the claws like slash into you there's like some kind of oozy, pussy, green substance dripping from the claws. Like, possibly some kind of innate venom, poison, or something like that. Can I... Am I able to yell, don't let it touch you? Oh, yeah, you can... I mean, yeah, you can scream. You can yell as a free action. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, um, this guy right here is attacking the Dwarven Cleric. And hits him. Dwarven Cleric has to make a saving throw. He passes. And this one here is attacking this guy with the, the dwarf with the crossbow. Hits him twice. Jeez. And he passes. Alright, so this dwarf and this dwarf are injured. It is now Racer's turn to act. Um, so yeah, you've basically got this troll like breathe, like hacking down right on top of you. Like, Alright, I'm going to take a huge risk right now. Uh-huh. I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself. Alrighty. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he fails the saving throw. Um, so, on a one or a two, he is going to choose this dwarf as his target. And a three or a four, he's going to choose Radavan, because it's going to come down to the two closest targets. 
Oh no, if you're rolling that openly, it's gonna default to four. Oh, I'm gonna roll it openly. So that's R, one, D, four. Oh, it's totally gonna roll four. It always does. Oh. It's a three. Cool. It's still rather bad. It's still, still rather bad. <laughs> okay, so, um, yep, he is distracted and will not attack you currently because of Sanctuary. Okay. Um, Kia! <laughs> um, what are you doing? I'm telling Cal to leave my bag and I'm also casting magic missile on this one. Alrighty. So you're going to magic missile the one that was attacking, was previously attacking yes. Racer. Okay. Yes. Um, and you're wanting Cal to get in the fight, I'm assuming. Ooh, yes. nice roll. 14. Thanks. <laughs> 14 damage to the first of the forest trolls. Okay. Die, forest trolls! So let's put a Cal on the board, and I'm assuming he's going to be in pseudo form. Sure hope so. <laughs> it's very hard to see on a green background, as he's supposed to be, because they have chameleon like abilities in the nice. woods and the forest. Nice, no one can see. Oh, so wow, yeah, you right can barely there. see him. In so fact, I'm just what I will him do, just so to make it easier easy. to see him, I'm going to mark him there. He's right there. <laughs> yeah, that's Cal. <laughs> so you know where he is. Okay. okay. Um, so he leaps out of the bag and transforms half half jump. Um, it's now the dwarves' turn to act. All right, dwarves, do your shit. Seriously. All righty. Arg. <laughs> Arg. Arg. I don't know. <laughs> Arg. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so the dwarves jump into action. Okay, clerical dwarf with his war hammer of justice swings wildly and misses. This dwarf here, um, he's swinging with his hat. Oh, with his axe. And he misses. Holy crap! What? You, you guys are gonna have to. You guys are gonna have to man up. This one shoots with his crossbow and hits this troll for. Which one? Four. This one. Okay. So that troll has been. That's the same one. So that's now yes. taken eighteen. All right. Over here, the first swings his wild axe twice, um, missing twice. His, the the leader of their company, Gaffer Ironbeard, next. Misses the first time, hits with the second. For 12 points of damage to that troll there. Not a great combat round for you guys. <laughs> um, it is no. now Radovan's turn. Hey! Radovan! Radovan! I'm going to do a sound burst right here, trying to get both of these guys. Okay. So... One of my two sound bursts. Kaboom! Shibuti! Okay, so each troll takes three points of damage from the sound burst. Now we oh. check for stun. The troll on this troll here, he is temporarily stunned. Which one? Sorry. That one. Alright. Okay, but the other one seems to be unaffected. All right, back to Racer. So, you currently, this troll cannot choose to attack you right now. Awesome. I'm going to get behind him. Okay. Um, as you start moving, he does turn. Okay. Uh, he can't attack you, but he is aware of the fact that you're there, and he's not... Th um, these seem a little... They're not dumb as posts. Perfect. So he doesn't want to let you... to get. He's not going to allow you to walk behind him. Perfect. Even while stunned, he can turn? Uh, oh, no, he is the stunned one. You are correct. <laughs> Good call, Radovan. Good call. Nope, Do I get a cannot. stab off because I was so close or no? Um, let's No, because you can only move so. five foot. So you, but you so. can the next round. Right. And you're before the troll anyway. So yes, you'll be able to hit the next round. Okay, Kia, it is your turn. Okay, well, now, now that I see that they seem to be handling that, this one's going to get a little blasteroony in the face. Okay, magic missile. Yes. Okay. Um, and Cal. Those fours! Wow! Ooh. Nice hit, 18. Awesome. Okay. I'm what do you want Cal to do? Hoping Cal to swoop in behind him here to see if he can sting him from behind. Okay, so Cal's going to fly over there. Yeah. Um, airborne, Cal can cover that distance. Um, would you like to roll for Cal? Sure. Go, Cal. Let's do it. Pseudo-dragon stabby time. 
All right. So it's and ranged. We all know of how well his poison worked in the <laughs> the last few it's times. It worked it's once used. really well and <laughs> never on the other time. <laughs> uh, I do melee, right? Uh, yep. With you 20 plus 8. Come on, Cal. Oh. oh. Okay, Cal Bail. swoops down, slashing with his tail, but doesn't land, unfortunately. Okay. Um, fly away! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bravely um, fly away. <laughs> it is now the dwarf's turn again. Get him! Okay, dwarven cleric with his hammer misses. This dwarf swings once, twice, hits the first time. Oh! For six points of damage. Uh, all the trolls have been hit now. Okay, this guy with his crossbow shoots and hits the stunned troll, but only for six. Seven. All right, this guy swings twice with his dwarven axe, hitting once for 15 points of damage. Yay! And now, here's the question: Are these regenerating trolls? I think all <laughs> trolls have some regeneration, right? That's something, yeah. Some some regenerate faster than others. Some have fast heal. Some have regeneration. Regeneration is worse. Gaffer Longbeard or Gaffer Ironbeard swings his mighty axe, hitting twice. Ooh, First hit for fifteen. The second hit for twelve. Nice. On this troll here. I didn't see your point. Okay, all the trolls are still alive. It okay. is now Radovan's turn. Radovan. Really? Radovan. Really? It's my turn? I didn't. Okay. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're after the dwarves. I'm going to use my strength domain and do a melee attack. All right. All right. Rip it up all high. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I just well. it's Bane, man. G. Um, so with my strength bonus, um, instead of my strength becomes what twenty one because it's seven strength. Um, you're you're yes. Yes, so twenty one plus five strength damage instead of the plus that you had before. Okay, so that's an extra plus three. So so it's plus ten. All yep. right. Plus ten to hit. Radovan is just trying to show the dwarves, oh, and he still missed. Oh, that my was God. a nineteen. That was so a nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> evil, evil oh. dice, evil dice. Alrighty. <laughs> it was a valiant effort, Radovan. Oh. Bubakin, thanks for the follow. Okay, it is troll time. Oh. This troll can do nothing because he is stunned. Aha. Okay, this troll. Hits the cleric. For five points of damage, cleric has to make a save. And he failed. Okay. Oh no. All right. Um, this one is swinging at Gaffer, uh, Gaffer Ironbeard. Swings once and misses, hits him the second time, and hits. But he saved. Only taking six points of damage. Radovan! Yeah. <laughs> Your mighty shield and armor protects you once again as the troll well, at least I'm not taking attempts to hack through your wall of plate mail and magical shield. <laughs> the other troll Just... goes. <laughs> And that's about it. Okay, Racer, it is your turn. You have a troll that begins to start to come around this turn. End of the turn, so he is losing his stun. But you are behind him, so you may make an attempt to do a backstabby. Is it a sneak attack because yep. he's stunned? It is. All right. Uh... So if you hit, you will get your extra 4d6 on top of it. All right, now is the time to get your 20 ready. Do I get pluses to hit? Um, yep. Okay, so you're a plus four, and you're a plus four to hit, and he doesn't get to add any dodgy agility type stuff. 
23. Yes, it's a hit, but not a crit. So D6 plus 2 for the regular damage, plus 4D6. So you're rolling 5D6 plus 2. All right. Ooh. Make it count. Come on, dice don't fail me now. Oh yeah. That's some good numbers. 24. Wow. Jeez. That is... End. It would have been a great time to roll a Yahtzee of sixes. <laughs> Yahtzee! Yahtzee! <laughs> okay, you, you dive in behind the troll, being not as tall as regular trolls and only about eight foot tall. You drive the short sword straight up between his lower ribs. Um, you're kind of showered in nasty green blood, and he screams bloody murder um, and drops to one knee in sheer agony. And I just have to say... Peekaboo, bitch. <laughs> that is the catchphrase. Okay, yeah, he is seriously wounded. Um, barely alive, in fact. So we'll tag him with a little red dot for everybody so they know. Yes! Okay, um, it is now Kia's turn. This one? Yep. That one. <laughs> Chad's so mean. That's all I gotta do. Ooh, I see ones. I do see ones. Eleven. Ooh, that's a lot of ones. <laughs> Three ones. Just as bad as three. Uh, rather than. At least you're doing damage, man. At least you're doing something. <laughs> it's true. I have, like, failed on everything I've Here's done so Here's the deal, far. right? You're a tank today. You're, you're playing tank. You're you're just standing there, fending him off. That's You're doing, you're doing okay. He's <laughs> okay, not yeah, killing yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, um, it is... The diggy diggy hole people's turn. <laughs> diggy diggy hole. Cleric boy diggy swings diggy uh, and misses. The one next to him fires his crossbow, hitting the third troll for seven. Over here we have this troll. He's going in for the kill with his crossbow bolt of doom, shooting at the troll and. The shot hits the troll right between one of his ugly ass eyeballs and the troll collapses to the yes! floor. Um, but it is still twitching. Uh oh. <laughs> what? On the gonna... other side. <laughs> um, this troll, he gets hit first of all once by this dwarf for 12. And then Gaffer Ironbeard comes in, wielding his mighty battle axe. Go, Gaffer. Swinging it down, a mighty blow, hacking the troll in the shoulder and dropping it to the floor. That's two trolls at least right now down. Um, any orders for Cal? Um, nah. Nope. Okay. No orders. Just... Okay, Cal lands be. in this tree then. Yeah. And is just going to observe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is Radovan's turn to do absolutely nothing. Radovan. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We're going to make this happen, guys. I'm going to do a searing light on this troll in front of me. Oh. Praise Cuthbert! <laughs> There's only one thing I can say to that. Little Radovan! <laughs> Bless him. What was it? All right. What was it? So, oh, did you just do a little Radovan? Oh, uh, yeah, of course I did. I, um, yeah. All right. <laughs> that didn't work so well, did it? Um, trolls again. The remaining two trolls. Troll 20 is the biggest troll of them all tonight. Alrighty. Um, this dwarf seems, the one that's been already hit a couple of times, suddenly seems to be kind of like shaking his head and looking all kind of dazed and bewildered. The troll, seeing this, dives upon him. Hitting twice and then sinking its teeth or attempting Whoa. to sink its teeth into his shoulder. <laughs> As it does so, okay, this troll is like mauling the dwarven cleric. No! No, no we need him! <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Don't okay. kill the cleric! See, this is why this is why priests are not supposed to be in the thick of battle. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. He's an idiot. Uh, Radovan, your troll. Messes you twice yet again. Just well, cannot I'm doing get through. Something right. Cannot get through that mighty glowing sun shield of yours. <laughs> Alright, um, it is now Me. Racer's turn. Alright, um How is that troll looking on the ground? Is he still twitching all weird? Uh, it's moving. I mean, like, he's not up and about, but uh... it's like it is moving. So what do you want you wanna finish it off or I mean what do you want to do? What's the game plan? Because it's like not defending itself, can I like like double you, stab you it? Can, you can you can basically coup de gras it, yeah. Can I just like stab the crap out of it? <laughs> yeah, you can just go oh. Yes, I would like to do that. Okay. So you you're basically just compounding damage to the down. Yeah, troll. I'm just gonna like stab its vital all its vital organs just to make sure the thing is dead. Deader Castrated. than a doornail. <laughs> Okay, so you're you're eviscerating that one. Oh yeah. Um, Kia. Playing chop and chop the troll. I do a 180 and look at the cleric being. Yeah, I mean you can basically see him go, like no! trying to. I... He's like got his hands up, trying to hold off, but the troll is like bearing yeah. down on him and is like biting into oh. his shoulder as the dwarf is like. Ah! I cast I cast a magic missile on that dwarf. Okay. On the on the dwarf. Go for it. I mean Roll no 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 no. Roll, oh, oh, that could have been such a classic <laughs> fumble if you didn't retract <laughs> that. Because I would have so troll. let you. You were so on that so fast. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> no, yes, fours. Look at them fours. Oh, well, Almost a Yahtzee. <laughs> you blast it with your balls of blue light, knocking it flying and clearing it away from the dwarf as it crashes <sighs> against the tree in pain and agony and nice. slumps to the floor immobile. <laughs> I love it how how my troll's the only troll that's still alive. <laughs> yeah, your troll is like You're just so, kind of looking at each other. Did you come you up know? in the woods to fight yeah. the trolls a lot, <laughs> do you, buddy? Huh? Huh? <laughs> We're just like having a conversation now about the philosophies of tree life and, you know, <laughs> Oh, I think it's your turn not to hit me now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay um, Maybe they're friends. They're like, I don't want to fight. Let's yeah, just talk right, about the tro The dwarves are basically in the process of beheading these two trolls. They're like oh, lopping their heads off. Seems like they know what they're doing. They have a game plan here. Um, leaving Radavan to dance with his. <laughs> can I? Can Wanna I say, dance, pretty boy? Can I say, um, eat any good horse like recently? You know? No. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm just doing a regular. He replies. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Dude. Radovan's like, do you want to dance, hot dog? And just like dancing around him. I think. The troll stop. Yeah, the troll stops and just says, look. Are you like, are you the fool? Are you the jester of the group? Because seriously, <laughs> this is embarrassing, dude. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a tag and get Granny Spittle trunk in here. Yeah, the, the, the troll just goes, <laughs> you know what? It's not worth it. <laughs> okay, uh, this time, however, the troll is more effective. A Busby. Um, he hits you for a total of. Eight points of damage. And I have to do you my thing, You must right? make a difficulty 17 fortitude save, sir. I, I swear, man. Like, you have to, Your fortitude save is off the chain. Oh, there okay. you go. There you Fine, go. You made man. it. You made it. But not the cleric. Okay, the cleric is kind of sitting down by now. He looks a little... It's not that hurt. He just doesn't look well. I'm sitting by him. Looking. Okay, now Gaffer Longbeard has turned and is making his way as is his... Um, buddy here. These dwarves coming like to so help little Radovan. of me. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine the dwarves like doing a little cabal. What's going on like, in their head is like, <laughs> this guy's is useless. This idiot? Should you just stand out the way and let us do this? Like, you're in the way, you're under our feet. <laughs> hey, I castrated a guy, okay? I fought a Rost monster. I had a wyvern. <laughs> I've done things, man. Alrighty, so they're going over there. Okay, this troll, um, he is making... Oh, I've already rolled for him, sorry. He already hit you. Um, Racer, your turn. Um, your troll that you're... Or your, your troll. Your troll's had it... While you're stabbing it and all, all the vitals, 
the dwarf with his axe comes over and just lops its head off and goes, that'll take care of that. Excellent. All right, I'm just going to move like behind this guy. And slings the head away from the troll, like hurls it to the side. Nice. <laughs> I'm moving on behind the next guy. Okay. Um, Dagger at the ready. Right, he does not, he appears to be so preoccupied with the fact that he's got three people attacking him. He has not noticed you sneak behind. Oh, he hasn't noticed me. Excellent. No. Um, Kia, yeah. your turn. Um, I'm just doing... Um, I'm just with this guy assessing, see if he's poisoned or not. Okay. Um, he definitely doesn't seem to be very healthy. You right. You want to make a heal check? Yeah. I do... Zero. Okay. Nice. Um, even with absolutely no healing skill at all, um, <laughs> being super smart and clearly better looking than Radavan, um, <laughs> you see that the you see like there's some green oozy stuff dripping from the claw marks, and yeah. in your not so professional opinion, yes, he has been envenomated somehow. All right. Okay. Um, so good call. The dwarves. Okay, this guy is staying with you. He's checking on his priesty friend. He goes, you're right. You don't look too good. Meanwhile, over here, um, this dwarven crossbowman shoots at the troll and misses. This guy <laughs> shoots at the troll and misses. Gaffer Longbeard gets in there. First blow hits for 19 points of damage. The second one hits for 16 and hacks the troll to the ground in two mighty fell swoops like he's chopping Great. down a huge tree. Great. Okay. And then Good. as he does so, he just kind of looks at Radovan and then he doesn't <laughs> say anything, but the guy with the crossbow says, and that's how it's done, laddie. <laughs> Golf clap. I see how it is. All right. As the final unpleasant troll has been done. Double fanfare. There you go. Okay. Well, the, they, they behead this one as well. Racer! Where he are goes, the men? Coming over, yeah. He goes, hey, lass, why don't you do something useful real quick? He goes, incinerate their noggins. What? You, elf Me? girl. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Goes, Incinerate the noggins. Why? You kind of see him roll his eyes, and one of them goes, "Burn the heads." Only if you let me uh, sleep while you guys hack down trees. Said, I can't be wasting later. my spells. I can't be wasting my spells. He goes, "God, for God's sake!" Okay, he pulls out a, a flask of oil and throws <laughs> it to you with a tinder box. Thanks. He says, "Do it the old-fashioned way, then." I will. So, Kia, you called me over. Oh, yeah, I tell you. I think that one's been poisoned. And then All I right. go and sit. Can I do anything with that? heads. Um, My handy dandy poison book. It'll give you a plus two on the heal check, but um, you don't have an antidote or anything like that. So, Radavan, do you have any kind of remove poison or anything memorized? I have delay poison memorized, so I'm going to cast it on him just to alleviate some of the. Okay, trouble. well, that'll definitely slow it down. Uh, delay poison is one hour per level, so it's for seven hours. Yep. Of delay. Um, which means if you all rest here for, uh, you know, to, I mean, it means that you could possibly memorize remove poison in the morning. But of course, it's gonna, it's at night time that you're expecting trouble, so. Right, so. Uh, well, I mean, isn't he, it only midday right now? About that, yeah. So probably, can we, can probably, we rest, late, uh, uh, probably like early afternoon. I think Radovan and I should rest while the others hack down these five trees. Yeah, you could possibly do that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna rest. Um, right, I'm gonna eradicate these dead trolls. Try to get my schmoogies back. And then my Carissa protect us. I was just <laughs> gonna say, I'm gonna stand guard. Alrighty, well, we're gonna take our second quick break. Alrighty, so let's get back to it, guys. Okay. Um. So, yes, so Kia and Radovan are taking a rest, and you want the dwarves to chop down trees. Yeah. 
And I am on high alert, making sure that Kia and Radovan are safe. I am I am watching and listening intently to everything. Okay. Um, are you you wanting the dwarves to chop down all the trees, or you want them to leave any trees? Because they'll do it. All the trees that are in sight right now. Yeah, I think we should get ourselves a nice big clearing. All righty. Ooh. And people are just sitting there just wondering how this is going to happen. Well, <laughs> guess what? Here we go. You asked. There you go. Tree stumps. Oh, tree stumps oh that's amazing. Around. Tree stumps all around. Um, okay, uh -huh. so they basically hack down all the trees. Um, so you have pretty much a fairly large clearing. So, um, yes, there are trees still around you, but you, I mean, you guys have, you've got a good, like, 100 foot area. Nice. So, um, awesome. Now, it's not quite as easy as you might have thought to rest with happy dwarves <laughs> hacking the crap out of trees, however. Yeah. I have um, my earplugs in, though. <laughs> but your buds? Okay, I'm just going to bring these up to the appropriate size. There we go. All right, there we go. We got some... Oh, I just removed the grass. Oh. Okay. So, um, you guys do your utmost to rest. I mean, you, you know, after a little while, it becomes... The dwarves are very rhythmic. So um, okay. it's like so that thump, would put me right to thump, sleep. Thump, thump, um, and after a little while, yep. So um, once they've done that, they're all standing around. Well, mastermind, what's the next step of your plan? Time is it? Like what time of day? Um, mid afternoon. Second breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, most of the dwarves by now are probably just sitting down picking food out of their backpacks, um, checking on the little priesty fellow right here uh, who doesn't seem to be particularly healthy. Is there anything in my book that talks about neutralizing some like this poison and maybe I can look for certain plants while we're just kind of um, hanging out? Not really. I mean, everything is, again, it's all going to be about spiders, snakes, scorpions, oh, okay, it's deadly more of an nightshade, animal. all kind of, of humanoid. Yeah. Gotcha. No, not trollies. No troll poisons. No. Well, shit. Right, and this this guy is pretty much taking a nap as well. <laughs> FT775, thanks to follow. Yeah, he's kind of just perched. He's leaning up. He's got his back leaning up against this tree. And this guy is just keeping an eye on him. All right. So, um, you have a while to decide what you want to do. You have a few hours before it gets dark to come up with a game plan. Well, Kia and I are resting, so we're not going to be coming up with anything. We're sleeping. Yep. So just let the time go by. I mean, unless Risa has some idea. All right. No. To reiterate our plan. Not you. Because otherwise, you wait till us to wake up. There you go. He's moving. All right. Yep. All righty. Well, you wait. Watch it starts back. to get darker. Um, once the night starts to creep in, the dusk, the dwarves are all still, you know, kind of joyously waiting for the possibility of something bad and horrible to happen. So we're going to just Silence. turn this on. Waiting. There we go. I'm going to bring this volume down a little bit. Is Ray going to wake us up after eight hours? I will let you guys sleep until like it starts getting. Okay. Up. So after you get your full eight hours rest, so Kia, you're back to full. Um, Radovan, you want to switch some stuff out? I already sent you messages. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't really have any like remove poison on my list. Well, neutralize poison, same thing. Yeah. So I I learned neutralize poison. Okay, and you're gonna cast that on this guy. I'm casting it on this guy, yeah. Alrighty. Well, he almost immediately feels better. Aww. And thanks you. He goes, I appreciate it, laddie. 
Uh, how hurt is he, actually? Can I do a heal check? Um, like, he's, he's down about 15, 16 points. Ooh, shoot. I should have got a heal before Radovan. Yeah, well, I mean... It, uh, I'll do a 2D... I'll do a moderate, a 2D8. Alright, 2D8 plus 5. Oh, plus 5, okay. So, oh my lordy. So, is that's that... actually just a 9. That's okay. Is that for me or the cleric? That's the cleric. Right. And you want to do anything... Um, the cleric, he actually gets up once you've done that. He comes up. He's going to go over to Racer. Oh, okay. Um, oh. He does a heal check. How many hit points yeah. are you down, Racer? Uh, 13. All right. He is doing a cure moderate. Two healers. Weird. And heals you for 18 points of damage. Nice. So All right. Back. All right. I'm going to say circle up, everybody. Listen this time. Yes. So right, well, you guys kind of take the lead on where you want to stand, and I will fill you. I will fill the circle in with dwarves. I'm at where I want to be. Okay. Yeah. So, and the cleric will be right next to him, next to her, and All we'll right. circle up in our respective corners. Oop. All right. They, everyone kind of gathers around. Um. Hmm. Kia, you must feel pretty, like, important right now. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it's like, protect her! <laughs> Alright, so you, you basically create a circle a around more. Kia and stand there. Okay, two, you got two itchy trigger finger dwarves standing there, like... <laughs> every time something moves, they're swinging the, swinging the, um, the crossbows around. The others are sitting there impatiently, either tapping their hammers or, um... Can I have my hand out ready to attack? And I'm just looking around. Alrighty, as you all stand. Um, I think I'll have my... I'm going to have my short sword in, in one hand. Okay, so you're like... Yeah. Everybody's waiting. Pa ready. Kind of t tense. All very, all very quiet. Except for the one guy probably eating Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> and they stand there all night and nothing happens, right? Yeah, right? Alright, um, so it gets dark. Um, you know, you're kind of looking up at the moonlight shining down. Um, it's not a full moon or anything like that, but um, just illuminating the little clearing that you guys are standing in. Everyone, after about a good hour, hour and a half, people are starting to get a little bit impatient now as you start seeing the dwarves <laughs> like. Come on, you they guys. They're not anymore. Sports. They're kind of getting lower. Right. I'm going to uh, cast... Uh, in this time, I'm casting Glyph of Warding right in front of me. Glyph of oh. Warding? Yes. Speaking All of, right. I'm going to cast uh, Mage Armor. What does that do for the people that don't know? It's just a little nasty thing that if something unwanted crosses it, gets hurt. Cool. It's, uh, yeah, it's like a um, little track. area. Yeah, it's a, it's a five foot, five square foot per level area so actually it's so I'm obviously casting away from the party to compensate for the whole thing five square foot per level so that's what I can't do math what did I say two? I missed so 35 so square five. feet oh of what of just yeah. an area that if something doesn't want is bad passes through no it gets 35 hurt. wow okay yeah I, I see think I see I see so 35 okay. square feet so I, there's your ward I cast a, a mage armor on myself Okay, so you bump your AC up. Yes. I Anybody tell else doing any per any readying anything? Did I uh, have an AC boost, or that was that a one-time thing? That was a one thing. That was your potion. Right, that's what I thought. Okay. Oh right, yeah, that was a potion. Yep. Uh, uh, actually, dark skin. I have a domain, a cleric domain spell. I probably want to cast on everybody since what? I'm in range. Okay. Um. Yeah, magic circle, um, protection circle. You're warding it up, huh? Yep, I want to put that on cool. everybody. Because it's a circle. Law domain. Uh, magic what's the circle. radius? What's the radius on it? Ten foot radius in ten minutes per level. So, okay, so it's only for an hour. Well, it's also um, only ten foot, right? Yeah, ten foot, yes. So, you could put it around Kia... Which I will do, but not right away. That's okay. I think if something happens, that'll be the first thing I do. I, yeah, because the ward is pretty much there. Once you've cast that, you're done. Right. All right. So you're still standing there, waiting in the moonlight. After a little while, Karen, the the priest, Karen? bald guy right here, he says, D 
Do you think the thing's smart enough to realise that it's not a smart thing to do to attack us like this? <laughs> do you want to? Maybe break somebody. The Maybe somebody should step out and be bait. What about that bat thing that you had? <gasps> no. Uh, do it. It's a great Please, idea, man. No. I'm going to cast made, uh, magic. Ah, mirror image. I'm like, no, and I cast mirror image. Okay. Um, how many mirror images do you have? Well, we'll see. That means you'd have to break the circle to walk with them. Right no, there. they'll just be right on the outside. She can kind of like cast them like around. Yeah. Oh, that's not nice. gonna scare things away. <laughs> I don't know. It might. I'll. I'll... I don't know. <laughs> Three. Wandering Kias. Wandering Kias. <laughs> Four. Five. All right. So you put a. a and I'm not. I'm gonna put my hands down so it doesn't look like I'm about to attack and like do. Okay, so they're all standing there like. Oh. Alrighty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. Hanging out in the woods. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Can Kia make her the dirt her, a little bit? I'm actually gonna say, um, Kia, can you make your your mirror images do things? They just do what I do. Yeah. Whatever she does, so if she scratches her head, they're all going to scratch her head. Okay. Pretty much. Can you, like... And they all have to stay within five feet of each other. I don't know, make it look like you're not paying attention? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying. <laughs> they all like... <laughs> <laughs> Can I do a listen check? Of course. <laughs> There's, like, nothing going on all night long. <laughs> Why? You can hear crickets. <laughs> no shit. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... You're kind of listening. Um, I mean, it It feels <sighs> kind of strange. Okay, I am gonna. I need to make a dice roll. La la One, la. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's <laughs> la, eight la, la. real things here. <laughs> That'd be a harmony of Kia's so singing. So I'm going to start... I'm going to go clockwise around from our priest, and Kia's going to be number eight in the middle. Oh, no. Mmm... <laughs> It always says eight. Oh. One. Our priest. Okay. Right, all of a sudden, your priest says... You notice he keeps kind of doing this a lot, like... Oh, say something, idiot. Okay, can you um, just point out which one's the priest, please? Uh, the guy with the blue tattoos, that one. And he's looking He's looking towards me or towards It's kind the... of like, he, he does a couple of just glances round behind him, okay. like... And After sorry, is that the one right beside Shaggett or this one? No, that's the one with the tattoo right that's there. It, that one. I don't see this tattoo. I, I'm not... I don't see, like, he's got the blue tattoos on his forehead and stuff. On top no. of his head and his arm. Well, zoom in. <laughs> this guy. Zoom in? There he is. You can zoom in on the map. You can see him. Oh, I see now. I see. Oh, yeah. okay. Now I see. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you. That guy. No problem. Okay, he kind of glances behind him a couple of times and then he says, Did... Do y'all see that? See what? <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, I keep because I keep seeing something out the corner of my eye, and I turned around because I, I guess it's just these guys kind of pointing to the other two dwarves either side no. of me is moving. Don't be an idiot. Where'd you see it? I just told you. I just like it just was in the like in the back of my peripheral vision, but when I turned around, it's not there. I am not going to turn and look. I'm going to keep watching my What's field. the duration on your mirror images, Kia? Uh, s uh, seven minutes. Yeah, okay. Well, um, se seven minutes passes. I believe, yeah. I'm going to cast Detect Magic on myself, and I'm going to look in his direction. Okay, so you're casting it on yourself? Yeah. Wait, what? You detect your own magic? <laughs> I want to detect, detect magical auras, you know? Oh, yeah, okay, so you don't want to cast it on you, you want to kind of put it... Okay, I'm with you. All right. I, I just want to be able to see maybe if there's something in the invisible plane that we can't see. All right. Okie dokie. Um, start detecting. A um, couple of the dwarves are glowing a little bit from items that they may or may not have, um, but there's nothing... <laughs> um, nothing else seems to be... Around nothing, you. Nothing ever. Nothing anywhere. Hmm. No. All right. Um. 
Okay. One of you dwarves are going to go out there. I'm going to cast a magic circle on you. Maybe, you know? Try to bait this thing out, whatever it is. Okay. Um, the the guy that's got the dwarven axe, he goes, I'll do it. All right, so I'm going to cast my law domain on him. Okay. And I'm going to warn him about the, the glyph, but tell him to, like, circle around it, you know? Like... Right, so, yeah, so he doesn't it wander is, right? straight into it. Right, I don't want him to wander into it, but I don't want him to, like, leave us entirely. I want him to be close to us, so... Okay. Well, he kind so, of strolls and wanders over to about here. Then kind of walks around so that his back is to the... Guesstimating where the circle is. Let me put the circle down. I'm going to kind of close the gap that he left. Okay. Scary. Want some Stand candy? <laughs> Want some candy? All righty, tighty. <laughs> oh, here it comes, man. <laughs> so I'm just going back to this now. I'm just switching maps briefly. Okay. All right. Suddenly, um, you hear a loud explosion. Oh. As something like literally materializes directly behind him but doing so comes straight in your glyph yes it so works. um deal your glyph damage okay so a blast yes okay so there's just that's a whole like litany of things that this is what this glyph is right um can we set it because it was better it like, it doesn't say what the damage is. It's like blast glyph, spell glyph, material. I mean. Right, it depends which glyph you're doing. You're like doing a. I'm doing a blast glyph. I mean, I imagine yeah. it was a blast glyph, right? So, hang on. A blast glyph deals 1d8 points of damage for two caster levels, maximum 5d8 to the intruder, and all within five feet of him or her. Yes. Which this actually... damage is acidic, cold, fire, electricity, or sonic, caster's choice, made at the time of casting. So. I mean, I would have done fire, obviously. I mean, okay, honestly. so you're basically going to do two caster, uh, per two caster levels. So you're going to do, um, you're level seven. Yeah. So if he does level one, it would be one D8. Right. The level three is two D8. So you're going to do four, four D8. Four D8s. Yeah. All right. All right. 48 fire damage to him and everything within five foot of wow. that. Wow. Um, which is good, except it's going to get your dwarf as well. woo -hoo -hoo. All well, right, you hit the beast for eighteen points of damage. You hit the dwarf for eighteen points of damage. <laughs> I had something that I wanted to do right away, so. Okay. Um, Tell you. Or... Oh, well, give me just a second. Shall we? Because this is like, pfft, as this thing like literally appears right. behind him. It um, works! Holy shit! I'm so happy now. I know, right? Like, That's amazing. Oh, I did 18 points of damage. Woo! Good job. Yes, did did good. Um, I heard. And then the thing attempts to, as it appears, like it's like literally like the explosion goes off. It attempts to bite down on the dwarf, but when the explosion goes off, it distracts it. Um. So it's almost like an instantaneous thing. What was Racer going to do? Um, well, first I need to know, uh, uh, hold person, is that only on humanoids? Um, Radavan didn't explain that, so I can't answer that. Okay, well then I, w I would cast hold person on it. Okay, so you're going to try to cast hold person, that's a full yeah. round. Uh, you'll have to make it. an initiative check, uh, do an initiative sure. check. Yep, no worries. Because right. I need to match yours Can against it. Can we all its. do it? No. Um... <laughs> oh. Awesome. Best rat event, not mine. I know, right? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yep, go ahead and get your initiatives as well. Let's get them down. Okay. Oh, mine's, mine's at five. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh, but I was so my ready god. for it. Oh man. Those initiatives, zero. though. I have zero. Oh, I have yeah, zero no, initiative. So. Apparently, okay. I don't want to do anything. So here's what happens. Suddenly, um, it appears, um, like instantaneously. There's a huge flash of explosion. It it looks like it's about to dive on the dwarf. Like it literally come out of the air. Like, like materialize mm -hmm. out of thin air. 
the explosion goes off, Racer spins and sees it, and she's about to cast Hold Person, and then literally, almost as quickly as it appeared, it disappears back into thin air. Um, the dwarf is like, Ow! That bloody well hurt! Uh, get here now. Said, Nobody get- said the thing breathed fire! Get back here now, that was my glyph. You it did almost that! Got- you get- son of a bitch! <laughs> Watch where you're firing next time. We saw it. It was not pretty, man. Yeah, lanky bastard. (laughs) I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a moderate. I'm gonna do a a single heal on him. So. Alrighty. All the dwarves are now kind of all on edge, like looking around, staring at it, wanting to know where it comes from. They gave him nine health. Just. (laughs) Bling. Did you just go bling? Thanks for nothing. Bling. I stopped it from killing you, man. You didn't see what it looked like. It was not pretty. It was Where like is it now? Where'd the bastard go? I don't know. He just vanished into thin air. Guys, right, alert. At, Keep at alert. At this point, you've seen that the priest is starting to make some... He's like cat, like doing a whole bunch of weird incantation stuff. Nice. And he's kind of like starting to stare and look into Good. the... And he says, Hmm. I didn't see it. Doesn't look like it's invisible. What? I can understand. I didn't see it. Keep looking. Okay, he's kind of glaring off trying to find this thing. Oh, man. He's, I don't think this is going to be as easy as we thought it was. I don't think it's invisible. I think it appears in and out of, I don't know, maybe from a different plane of existence or something. Is there any way we can pull it from that plane of existence, or...? Uh, Yeah, when it comes out to attack. But it doesn't look like it's stupid enough to come and attack us like this. Because we're going to have to do this the dwarven way. Come on, lads. Oh, no. Guys, guys, start moving out of the circle. Oh, no! (laughs) Guys! All of them? Not even one? Nope. They're pretty much all, like, deliberately back, back like, opening the circle up. Going, come on, you bastard! Bring it on! Oh my god, stay close, stay close, stay close. <laughs> you guys have just formed your own little three man circle. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, they all start to look around, um, glancing this... left and right. Guys, it's not the answer. I'm telling. Hello, dwarves. I'm. Bull. <laughs> I'm gonna say the, for the. I'm gonna be like cleric, come back. I don't know his name. Cleric. Right. I'm just ready to attack as soon as I see anything happen. So you're all on point. Like where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And thank <laughs> you for the donation. We will. Yay! That's another one from Angel as well. Angel, Angel. you're amazing. That's Sweet. illegal. You shouldn't do that. I'm That's illegal. illegal. <laughs> I make it rain. Thanks for the follow. Oh, I'm Rocket uh, Gamer. I think I missed you when you. Are there the any like stones on the ground? Because I'm gonna stoop down and pick them up to throw. Um, yeah. I mean, I you'll mean, probably be able to find a, a, a. You know, there'll be some small rocks and stuff. Okay. All right. Maybe so I'm gonna in, in a wood. stoop and pick them up. Yeah. Okay. Well, the dwarves are like slowly but surely expanding out the circle. Stay within the trees, guys. Stay Come within on! the trees. Come on, you yellow bastard! Can we kind of like spin in our circle? You're all like circling around, looking. <laughs> like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to Ray and Kia, we gotta stick close to the cleric. So you know, spin and circle with me this way. Okay. I'm gonna back up. I'm just gonna kind of put a hand on your cloak uh, and follow what you're eating. Right. Same. Well, no, I'm gonna have my hands up. Oh shit! These doors are fucked. Oh no! Hey. <laughs> these doors are so screwed. All, right, all of a sudden, it materializes like directly <laughs> behind this guy. Oh, I see that one. I see that. Um, yeah, it's directly in front of Kia. Um, oh, so, on initiatives, <laughs> zero. It goes first. Dang it. <laughs> materializing and gets an attack of opportunity on the dwarf. And hits. Ooh, shit. Okay. Uh uh-uh, I don't like the way they said that. <laughs> shit, all right. Right, Dwarf basically, it bites into his shoulder and rips out like a huge chunk of flesh, and he screams loudly. Okay, um, so you guys that? have all seen this thing. It's appeared over here. Kia, what do you want to do? You're next. Unfortunately for this dwarf, <laughs> are you? Gonna... 
<laughs> Do it. I My approve. first time I see it, I'm gonna have to give as much damage as I can, and I'm fireballing it. Oh my yes. god. So, you know, you gotta <laughs> sacrifice a dwarf once in a while. <laughs> I, um... Okay. It sucks. It sucks. I'm not gonna try to kill any other dwarves. Just once. <laughs> oh, that's so fucked up, but awesome at the same time. I approve. I, I approve right. completely. I don't Jagged like approves. it. I don't like it. It looks... Ooh, I see sixes. <laughs> All right, you nuke it for 27. <laughs> <laughs> um, plus the dwarf for 27. Dwarf. Um, so that's... Dwarf party, oh god. Okay, um, basically the fireball lands... <laughs> um, right, let's have a look here. He is now chaotic evil. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, it's chaotic good my ass. You just blew up an <laughs> innocent dwarf. Chaotic, hello. Yeah, but evil. chaotic is one thing, but nuking, knowing that she's going to take potentially kill the dwarf at the same time, that's not a goodly action, I'm afraid. I gotta Well, call you, you never know, that. right? Because she she was just ready, right? So it's not like she's like, this isn't a good thing to do. She was just <laughs> looking for the thing. She wasn't like, oh, there's a dwarf there. I'd have thought that if it wasn't for the discussion oh, that came before it. Like, I know that this is going to get the dwarf, but... <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> if it was like an all instinctual... Right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it, man. You're turning a little dark side here, aren't you? All right. Well, okay. So you fire, um, you blast the thing um, and the dwarf. There's a huge engulfment. The dwarf goes flying across the floor. Um, the thing, <laughs> once again, almost immediately vanishes into thin air. Damn it. The dwarf is laying here, like, seriously injured on the floor. All the That's the same guy that got hit before, isn't yep. it? Yep. <laughs> Um, you hit him? He is seriously hurt. Okay, at that Damn point, man. all the dwarves are, like, turning to look in that direction. <laughs> they go, what the hell was that? What are you doing? You're Sorry, to kill it, us, appears, it appears once, and I'm going to give it my full force. It's not at the expense of someone else's life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys were willing to whisk your wives anyways. Right, Radovan, go heal. Um, what? Can't stay with I'm me, sorry. don't we? Uh, right, he does a I'll, cure. He's doing a. Um, I'm just gonna blue ball him, okay? <laughs> blue but it's ball him. More, I feel like all of you guys are right, more he likely does a to cure, die. He basically is casting um, both of his cure criticals on him for the day. Okay. <laughs> this is so fucked up. Okay, this just, is the dwarven myself. priest just burnt both of his big heels on his buddy. Um, is his buddy okay? Do I need to heal oh, he, him too? No, or? he's fine now. Grazix, thanks for the follow. Um, oh, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to run back. That's what do you get for not listening to our strategy? Jeez. Your strategy wasn't working. It was working fine. Because there's like nothing you can do to, like, when it appears, like, catch it or, like, freeze it or something. You think I can freeze it? Because I don't know what you can do. I can't catch it. I can just hit it when I see it. Huh. Everybody move closer to her. She's not <laughs> likely to fry herself, lads. And they all kind of move back into the circle. What a great not idea. Not because they think yeah. that it's it's the right Good thing idea. to do, but because they think it's the safest thing for them to do. They don't trust Kia. That's why we wanted the circle, guys. We know what she can do. Yeah, but it don't, it's only coming out when one of us strays. He goes, well, you could have, because you could have warned us. He goes, Gaffer. He goes, well, I know we said we needed to hire a wizard or a sorcerer or something like that, but did we have to go and hire a crazy one? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's, guys. It's okay. Calm down. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, so bad. All right. What are we gonna do? It only seems to want to come out when, when one of us strays. Nope. No! <laughs> okay, it materializes right in, right by Kia Liana, yeah. like in the <laughs> middle of the circle. This is punishment for me, isn't it? <laughs> I know it, Gore. Oh, it's because it, I it, fireballed. Hey, it, it, it's not gonna be dumb enough to stand there and <laughs> wait. It's not gonna fall for that tactic every time. 
Uh, right, it kind of appears right inside the circle and attempts to chomp down on Kia. Um, it hits for only four points of damage. What? However. How? Um, let's see. Nobody is facing it except Kia. So Kia, you can you can basically retaliate. Everybody right. else will just hear a scream. <laughs> fireball! Right. Oh. Fireball! No. Do it! <laughs> hey, what was it you said? When you see it, you're going to just go ahead. Fireball. Take everybody out. <laughs> okay, Kia, basically, you loose a magic missile on it for 14. Okay. Um, the problem is, when it comes, when you see it, all of the singed fur that it had before doesn't seem to be as singed anymore. So, fire damage, not very good. Oh, no, the fire damage definitely hurt it. Oh. Um, and it's right just... after attempting yeah, to it, murder it, it... you, it disappears again back into the ether. And we are going to leave it right there. What? No. <laughs> we are going to leave it right there as this thing attempts to murder Kieliana. <laughs> oh, I forgot. My goodness. Hi there, I'm Gorbad, the Dungeon Master on How We Roll. And if you'd like to follow my personal challenge, you can do so at twitch.tv slash Gorbad or follow me on Twitter at Gorbad. Hi, guys. I'm Bane. If you'd like to hang out with me some more, come chill in my own personal stream at twitch.tv slash Bane1271 or toss me a follow over on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Bane Blackstar. I hope to see you soon. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. I did not see you there. When I'm not playing a badass cleric of St. Cuthbert on How We Roll, I am Shaggin. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash shagget, or on Twitter, if you can figure this out, at aneb underscore convos. See you guys. Hey guys, I'm Jane. I play Kieliana on How We Roll, as you probably know. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash janeivana. I stream sometimes. Or you can follow me on Twitter at jane on twitch, and that is with a zero. Peace, suckers.